Welcome to episode 65. Jana was just lubricating herself for you people. <laughs> Lubed up and ready to go. He's Good intense. morning. <laughs> uh, was she actually lubricating herself, Chris? I need you to corroborate my statement. Slightly, slightly lathering. Mm -hmm. That stuff's great. Sorry, this is a not for safe for work podcast and there was lubrication happening. <laughs> you can imagine what you want. Yeah. People at home. Uh, Imagination is free. You're welcome. So today we're joined by Chris at BNS yeah, Reptilia. Yeah. Uh, Good afternoon. All right, we got a we got an echo. Do you have it pulled up elsewhere? Yep, I was in the chat. It's my fault. Okay, sorry. It's okay. I was. Scared. I do that all the time. I just that's how I knew exactly what was happening. <laughs> Uh, and he joined us to talk about locality bows, but first we have about 400 minutes of intro material, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm getting ready for a show. Jan is getting ready for a show. Chris is getting ready for a show. It's the trifecta. We did it. Everywhere. Triple crown. It's like it's we planned right. it. I'll be in Shawnee. Jana, where, where will you be? I'll be in Portland. And Chris, where are you? What are it's you doing? Oaks, Pennsylvania. I can't speak. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's good. We're doing good, people. I didn't sleep very much last night. It was a quality evening for me. It was a quality hormonal 10 year old morning for me. So, mm. how's your I, I morning? Have, I may have flown in late and uh, frazzled uh, everybody. Sorry, guys. No. And you have special guests with you, right, Chris? <gasps> Can you come on the show yeah, for five yeah. seconds? Everybody, hold your foul oh, language. <laughs> Just as we let him get her settled. You don't yeah, have to, though. No pressure. <laughs> My sidekick for the day. Is that baby? This is his whole back <laughs> from 2022. <laughs> and what's her name? It's him. His him. Miles. Oh, sorry. Miles. That's okay. Oh, Miles. Aww. Mr. Miles. Well, welcome to the world, Miles. <laughs> I'm sorry you're on this podcast. He's ready for space. <laughs> well, he's got his assistance out too, so mm -hmm. it's all good. Fits right in. Is it weird that I want to smell him? I do want to smell him. Just the best. <laughs> mm -hmm. if, if you all didn't think women were weird, now you definitely know. I'm right there because they're you. like huffing babies. <laughs> this is definitely a women's podcast. <laughs> Jake Hole, I love saying your name. He wants right. to know if it's a cardinal sin to listen to it at work out loud. He's just asking for a friend. Mm. Depends on your work. Strip club, not a problem. Any, totally everywhere fine. else? Mm. I, I am going to try to keep it a little more professional today, guys, because um, there's a little man accompanying us. Baby. All right, let's I want to give him nightmares. <laughs> Quick shout outs, Smoky Mountain Balls, Forward Motion, Kaiju Constrictors, Bows and Balls. Oh, look. Hey. He's got a double ganger. Woo. Woo. <laughs> Peter, Jay, uh, and Richard's here. What's up, Richard? Oh, okay. Richard. He's here. Mr. Justin, Stone Age Ball Pythons, Super Snake Syndicate, Rulio Syracuse. Who are we missing? Lost in Snakes, Alluring Serpents, Corky's here. Hi, Corky. Marshall's here. CRM Lady Reptiles. Tiz is here. Oh Hi, my Lady God, Tiz. there's so many. Y'all need to stop talking. Uh, Lori Gray is here. <laughs> All right, just read names quick so I don't have to bring them up. Lori, uh, Evil, um, Boss Exotics. Thank you for Lost coming, everybody. PCF Funny Royals. Yeah, I don't know Evolve if people like exotics. shout outs, but I think people do. So I'll continue to do them. Do you like yeah, shout outs, yeah. Chris, or do you think they're boring? No, I think uh, the, the recognition definitely is nice because, you know, they're supporting you. So yeah. it's good to give a little recognition. Yes, thank you for being here. Lori, I said you. I'm sorry, but I didn't say gray family snakes. I, I'm sorry. I did say Lori. Oh, man. All right. We're a hot mess today, everybody. Okay. It's just one of them days. Coming in hot. Let's do our sponsors. Guess what? Are we doing? What? Go oh, just go. It's cool. <laughs> Use code hashtag shit happens with a exclamation point for the I 
for five dollars off your crypto panel from Research Associates Laboratory, betdna.com. Please do not send shit at whole piles of shit. <laughs> no shit bags. No or shit bags. bags. Okay. A swab. Neither of these things are acceptable. Blows my mind. I used to work in the medical field and yeah. I would have to tell you that the number of times a patient, I'm not even a doctor. I was the medical assistant checking you in the number of times they reached into their pocket and pulled out mystery stuff that came out of their body. Too many, <laughs> too many. And I'm like, well, we actually just don't need to see that. It's, it's okay. You can just tell her about it. Does this look normal? <laughs> 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 You just save that for the doctor. I'll be I'll be right back. <laughs> what he's told me though is he gets extremely large bags of shit, like surprisingly, <laughs> like half a like pound of shit. Giant human, yeah. Shit. And he's like, "This is too much. I don't need this much. What do we do with it?" And and they'll and they'll like pull samples like from chickens or whatever of like a whole barnyard of shit, and they'll just like shovel it into a big like you know Walmart bag and just. Cl don't do that, please. He's ass, and we we will comply. <laughs> Otherwise, enough. no discount. All right, Jamie, let's where's do your better half? Isn't it normally her? Tune it in. Anyway, sorry. Normally it's his other half. Continue. I got squirrel. <laughs> just I don't know. Yeah, it is ten pounds of shit in a five pound bag. Somehow they pull it off. Mm. All right. Jana, introduce me to our next sponsor's contest, please. Okay, so Justin with Stone Age Ball Pythons has been running a, a giveaway for the last two weeks. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you missed out. <laughs> um, too late. He's giving away two. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Chris. Oh, no, I just said too late. <laughs> yeah, too late. So, uh, two winners giving away a sugar yellow belly female and a um male clown so we are going to spend to win two winners and you need to contact justin at stone age and you are liable for shipping only um and he will help you out with the rest of the details so after this you you hit him up not us all right here are we go we ready? I'm, i don't we have are a drum ready. roll do y'all want to fake a drum roll <laughs> y'all are such team players don't wake the baby up I know. <laughs> First winner, Santorelio22. Please Woo! message Justin. Th congratulations. Is he in the chat? And I think you get first pick, and then the second winner gets what you don't pick, I believe. But ask Am I supposed to remove that instance? <laughs> Justin, type in. Yes. They won, so you can remove that instance. But if they have any others in there, they have a chance to win again. All right. I don't know if he has, like, if you get one, that's it. All right. Well, one more time. Second winner. Pushing pythons. Pushing pythons. Congratulations. Woo! Okay. And right, we'll we also have it. these up on his uh, Instagram account. So make sure if you won that you did all the things you were supposed to do um, and message him privately and he will help set this up so you guys can get your snakes. Congratulations. We need a soundboard, Jessica. I know. It's so much money, though. All right. We still have even more sponsors for some reason. Yes, Why are these people Shane, here? <laughs> Shane Kelly. Ooh. He did a like clutch reveal video for two clutches. Uh, mm -hmm. It was on YouTube. Check it out, everybody. And he did confirm that the PCR testing was correct for his female by producing ivories. Testing for the win, guys. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. This is new age ball python breeding right here. Mm -hmm. um, very exciting stuff. I have a couple that I need to send out for testing. And I don't know, changing the game. Chris, so, have you Shane tested Kelly. anything yet? I haven't said anything out yet. I figure by the time all the Canovas and Will Banks and everybody send out their thousands and iron out all the wrinkles because they were so backed up, I think I'm just going to sit tight and go the old-fashioned way this season for a few. And then uh, maybe this summer 
I'll start sending a couple in. I, I did participate a lot in um, Seidel's um, thing. I sent, mm -hmm. I sent her the um, super spark that she needed to complete the yellow belly complex. So I was sending a lot of sheds to her, which was, which was pretty cool. Yeah, she did. Uh, she she broke the 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 ground to begin with. So mm -hmm. thank you, Doctor Seidel. Yes, thank you, Doctor Seidel. Our, our and so awesome. um, Patricia, motherfucking science for the win. <laughs> yeah, I, I obviously oh. did it. But they're not as they're not as like backed up as you think anymore. So if you're you're really like burning to know something before the season ends, no, it's okay. Yeah. Just send off a shed. A lot, a lot of the guys in our group are just started getting them back, and they were out for about two and a half months now. Yeah, so they're starting to get them back. Look, well, I showed up. What's up, brother? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Minna. <gasps> DTMG pythons. Also, uh, this funny guy. He's one of our. He's one of our local men in our group too. He's a good guy. Yeah, he should, he should be working right now though. Uh oh. Call, shots fired. <laughs> do you want to do the rest of the sponsors or do you want to yeah. get them? Yeah, we can do them because I, I have a feeling this boa thing is going to go on for a <laughs> hundred years. <sighs> One million years later. Great family snakes. Am I to understand correctly? These are on hold, but they're not because actually of the on weather, hold. But they're not yeah. on hold. So hit up their... Morph Market, if you are in the VPI Azantic Pied Project, they've got lots of beauties up there. None of them are actually on hold. They put them on hold because the weather isn't good. So if you want one of those beauties, just message them and they will mark them for you sold and then talk about when, when shipping is going to be appropriate for those guys. Um, awesome family, family affair. Um, hit them up if you want to talk Azantics. Mm -hmm. What well, line do they work with? BPI. 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 Okay. I see it now. Powerhouse Pythons. Is he going to the show, Jim? Powerhouse Pythons is not going to be at the show this um, weekend, but he will be at the Pac Northwest show in two weeks. So you guys can catch him there with me. You can say hi to us both. Um, he will be there with bells on. And thank you so much, Powerhouse, for supporting us. Thank you. And then Bravo Zulu. Bravo Zulu. Woman owned, veteran owned, admin of the women group on Facebook, guys. Check her out. She's incredible. If you don't know her, you should. Mm -hmm. Bravo, Zulu. All right, we did it. Uh, uh, Stone Age will be vending uh, tomorrow, right? Oh, Stone Age will be saying? vending. Um, it's local to him because right. he's a, he's an organ boy. So he will be vending. T Come say hi to both of us. Hopefully his daughter will be there. I don't. I haven't decided. Mine was kind of a brat this morning, so I don't know if she gets to come this weekend. She's the money maker, though. You got to take her. I can take her business without taking her. <laughs> if she's gonna give me attitude, um, yeah. So we'll both be there, and um, we also have another sponsor, but he is here with us today. Mm -hmm. Sponsor, you want to shout one. yourself out, or do you want us to earn our money and shout you out? Uh, not too much to say. Just PNS Reptilia. Check us out. Um, you know, we try to support channels that we like and enjoy listening to and learn from. We support a couple other, you know, channels. Um, but today it's about you guys. Thank you. You can shout them out if you want to. Thank you for, thank you for everything you guys do. It really is, uh, every Friday. I, I, I don't forget how I got turned on to the podcast, but like the first one I heard, I was just like, holy crap. Every, just some of the, the things you guys put together and, you know, the, the in-depth, way you handle it and explain it is just it's great you know for everybody i feel so you guys are awesome doing a great thing i appreciate thank it. you thank you we appreciate it um apparently i'll have a neighbor at the herb uh, show uh oh my god oh, oh my kiss god, any babies table room i know we're no buddies yeah don't no. touch my table you can look yeah okay. don't touch don't it don't lick her don't touch her displays don't shake her hand unless you have gloves mm. on Mm -hmm. I'm serious. I, I'm not allowed to touch her whole <laughs> her whole area when we've been together. She's I like, well, you it. stay on your side of the table. So I like 
wave from afar and I was like we should get pictures for the podcast because like we're not together and like in our gear and I don't know like, where you've been Jana he's like I don't know where you've been and that's way too close for me but you could take a picture of me and you and you could like crop it together and I was like <laughs> god damn girl no but she's, Listen, she's hardcore so don't don't fuck with her I, I printed out like a really obnoxious sign that's really big off of Vista print oh, that's, that's just like please don't touch fucking nothing that's basically what it says but it's in like i'm surprised language. that your banner is not like biosecurity out alert. Of here. <laughs> just give that paper to everybody around you so they don't walk by your table all the other vendors right i am so triggered right now no i don't know i i am a uh selfish bitch but but um, she's also wonderful i'm trying to help okay so i don't know how, how to be, be better about it um exactly. I'll see you there, though, buddy. Let's go. Lucas Landon showed up. What's up, buddy? Hi. What's up, Kai? He's local, too. Well, not real local, but he's in our group of uh, um, readers of the East Coast. Wait, so do we have Jamie and Lindsay? And Jamie, I didn't mean any offense. I just really love Lindsay. We're like soul sisters. <laughs> um, and I don't just talk to anybody, you know, when they ask late at night while they're looking for dinner. So, you know, you, you should feel special in that way, but I'm sorry, I do love your life, your wife more. <laughs> All right, we've tortured Chris long enough. Chris, can I have like the 90 second elevator pitch of your company, please? All right, so uh, growing up in, you know, I guess it would be rural PA. I was always into catching snakes and whatnot as a kid. It got rid of them in high school and then got back into them uh, February 13. I just started breeding for the excitement of breeding. You know, it was just a hobby. It was just making cool things. It wasn't about making money. Um, it was nice to have it pay for itself and then maybe just reinvest the money in other things. And then around 17, I actually started thinking about what am I doing? You know, I started holding back more things and then really treating it like a business uh, turn. In 1920, we actually incorporated to an LLC, changed the name, used to be BNS Pythons, put Reptilia on the end because we breed boas, we breed Pituophis, all types of colubrids, Mexican Black Kings, all that stuff. So I didn't want to be the Python guy selling you a boa. It just didn't seem logical to me. So we kept the BNS that, that stuck, you know, it was me and my buddy's last names and just threw up a graphic, went with the colors I liked and it stuck. So. Here we are now, um, last couple years, invested a lot on some double recessive projects um, and just starting out, kind of kind of restructured the, the whole breeding ball python end of it, but still went through with the locality boas and some blood pythons. Just I started to work with more things, challenge, not challenging, but different than ball pythons. You know, I, mm -hmm. my, goal, my goal is as many species as I can breed, but keeping it in control. So slowly each year I'll add something, maybe breed it for a couple of years and then move on. If, if I really enjoy it, I'll keep working with it. And uh, it's just turned into a family business and we're looking to uh, be full time very soon, if not this coming spring. That's incredible. And now shout out what's behind you because that looks intense. Oh, uh, this is a um, Baron's Racer. I believe it's a female, came in a collection buyout years ago. And then the big, the big one there was, it's really lit up. It's hard to see, but I got it at a, a scrap yard for like 50 bucks. It was some kind of old weird cabinet. Like I would, I think it was for like a laboratory. So I put lights in it, a heat panel in it. And I had uh, just pets, uh, a huge jungle carpet female. She's probably seven and a half foot long. She's hiding now though, I think. And then I had two green tree pythons in there. I know I, a lot of people don't like co-inhabiting and this and that, but it never had any issues until the one got stuck behind the heat panel and asphyxiated itself. Like, Oh, snakes. Why did they do this to us? <laughs> you know, they were, they were in there for three years and then all of a sudden now he did that. So, you know, it was all a sudden like, Oh, look, my head fits. So I yeah. must fit. The rest of me must fit. So that was a bummer. So right now it's just a green tree and a jungle carpet and they coexist fine. They're not breeders. You know, they have their own separate regimen up here and, uh, they're just for display. And then we have uh, some tortoises. We have a sulcata across the room and a red foot. 
my wife's tortoises, and then we have a Puebla milk snake in the other room. So my son oh, likes the Puebla milk snake. That's what he likes to play with. So, and then everything else is in the basement. <laughs> and this is his older son, not not his baby. <laughs> He doesn't handle me at the He just came years. out being chill and he's like, Dad, give me a snake. <laughs> so I got to ask. So you have a green tree and a carpet in the same enclosure. Correct. Oh, she's gonna, she's gonna did you test it. them for Nido? <sighs> I didn't. You're, know. You're, you're hurting I'm, me in my heart. I know. I know. And my I'm just heart. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> See, it's not the cohabbing that she has a problem with. <laughs> no, I think cohabbing it's could work dusting. if it's big enough, but it's just a cross contamination crisis. Potentially, but maybe not. But they've been in there three years, so the cross contamination is is done. <laughs> what could have happened happened, and and I, you know, back then when I initially did that, I've never housed animals together. But it was one of those things where I never really planned on breeding them, so I, I just did it. But then as I as I got more involved with you know watching podcasts and listening to you guys and venturing into things, I'm thinking, oh man, all these things, you know, I should have been doing differently. Were you so, trying to make carpenters or are they both males? No, there is a male and a female. I wasn't trying to make them, but if it happened, it happened. I mean, I, I think they're very neat looking, but I know they catch a lot of flack as well. Mm -hmm. But they haven't showed any interest in each other. So I think I'm okay. But okay. you're also not cohabiting them in like a 40 gallon. This is like no. a gigantic. They have enclosure. plenty of room. It's six like foot a zoo tall. size enclosure. I'm not like advocating cohabbing or anything, but if you're going to cohab, I feel like the giant enclosures, it's a different than a 40 gallon and you've got six ball pythons in there. You know, I feel like it's a different story. Mm -hmm. So each your own, you know, no, no judgment here. You, you do your thing. Um, I actually thought Lindsay said that she thought it was the outside. I did as well. And then you turn it, it's this humongous <laughs> enclosure. Cause I, all I could see was the one right behind you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not going to talk very much about this, but. I'm not in the cohab police because boas get cohab for six months a year or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And your Japs. Yeah. Get right. Cohabbed. So like yeah. back off brothers in the comments. Yes. <laughs> but, I was trying to say, but that we're not, you have to think about it when we're doing it. And, and, but also you do the best you can with the knowledge right. that you have at the time. Right. So, yeah, well, they're so okay for now. Learn. So moving Maybe. on, if I, if I ever were to breed that female or pick up a female green tree, then I would test and see where we're at before. I mean, I would have to test that new animal coming in anyway in that situation. So that that'll that's when that would happen if that mm -hmm. okay, But either way, they've good. been in there a long time and they're stable currently. Yeah. And obviously, they're in their own enclosure, so they're kind of their own biosecurity right. sphere. Um, Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to make it clear. Oh, <laughs> the uh, do you have Louisiana pines or just northern pines? I have Louisianas. I work with a bunch of. I guess they'd be the subspecies of pines. I do northerns, uh, southern leucistic, uh, black pines, um, Louisianas, northern Mexican. And I think that's it. I have an oddball snow southern I'm raising up, and I have a speckled southern that I'm raising up. So I'm seeing how those all interact with the leucistic southerns. Because I'm trying to figure out if they're all, you know, they're classified as southerns or Florida pines. Mm -hmm. But you have speckled, leucistics, and I'm not sure where the supposedly snow came to play. So that's a fun little thing I want to work out. Yeah. Were yours, Louisiana's from Joe or related to Joe's? Because I know there was only a couple lines. No, they came from a guy, but literally one town over named Jay Jacoby. Mm -hmm. Huge pine snake guy. He's had, he's had pine snakes for God knows how long, years and years. That's where all my stock comes from. Um, I have the names of the bloodlines they came from on their ID cards. I can't think of them off the top of my head, though. And they're in hibernation anyway, but I could always look it up for curiosity factor. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was just curious. Like, like while Joe still had them and was active, like he was a big, you know, promoter of, you know, rare locality pine snakes, and then it sort of trailed off. So I was just curious how related yours were to right. his or whatever. There's, 
they're still pretty rare, I believe. Um, some people are still working with them. I just saw somebody in California that posted some, but the problem is um, you you can't sell them across state lines. They're like mm -hmm. black pines. So it makes it a little bit more challenging to find somebody in your state to, to sell them to. But my, my buddy works with the paperwork and whatnot. So this year, since I'm producing both of those different types, we're going to work on getting that paperwork. And if somebody in another state wants to purchase them, we'll work with them on the paperwork and get it to them. Yeah, I heard it's not that hard to yeah. do the paperwork. It's just like, you know, it's another level of like irritation where you're like, I might as well just take it to the show and just hope somebody wants it instead. Right. But yeah, if there's volume. But Pennsylvania's a pretty big state. I don't know how many millions of people are there. Yeah. 10 million or something. I don't know. I'm guessing. <laughs> Hopefully they want a pine snake. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Okay. Before we get into the boas, I have one question that burns in my heart. You had a blackhead spot nose male that bred last year. Is that correct? correct? Was it allelic? After watching um the hell did i just watch today was it dpr uh antoine uh, dpr cold blood um i have to go back and reassess everything because i hatched a couple pastel leopard spot noses they were clearly spot noses because they were just the, the pattern was insane and mm -hmm. they looked blackhead to me so i just had possible blackhead on them until i watched that video today where these He's saying it was allelic, that that is an allelic combo, blackhead and uh, spot nose. So I got to so, go down, really look at these babies again and assess them. So I looked at your picture and, it's, yeah, what? You're muted. Okay, Sorry. you're back. <laughs> um, I, I touched my microphone. Did you have any babies that looked like they didn't have either? Um, off the top of my head, I, I, I'm not sure. I have to see... I sold one. I kept the two. Uh, one's on hold now. And I'm trying to think of what else was from that litter. I'd have to go look at the ID card because I literally had too many babies last year. <laughs> um, okay. yeah. But I have to also see, I think that male bred another female as well. So I would have to look at that clutch as well. I'm not positive though. I have to see. He might only sired one. So I looked at your picture mm -hmm. on Instagram mm -hmm. okay. a couple days ago or whatever once I heard about this. And I... I saw just blackheads and spot noses, not yep. both and okay. not neither. But not all animals were like fully revealed in the picture. Okay. So I was like, oh snap, we finally have an answer. We need Chris to give us the answer. But can you? She wants you to say, I'm, yes, just, I'm just desperate for straight facts, for confirmation. Because okay? I've had it told me both ways. And I'm like, this is the man who can save me from my thoughts about this topic <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't dpr it was um it was uh rep, reptiles for centuries the guy out of south africa i can't think of what his name is but he's got a ridiculous collection um he had a video on it today he bred the male to two different females and he was talking about it being a lily and all the babies either had blackhead or spot nose so i, I mean it makes sense i believe well so we've had Justin say it was an allelic, and then Canova through summer say it was allelic later. Okay. And we've had people be like, it's not allelic because I made a super chocolate spider or whatever. But maybe it was just a chocolate spider. And they really, both complexes are allelic. So this is like the, the debate. There's multiple lines of evidence. But I'll check out that video from... Uh, well, say it again, please. It was Reptiles for Centuries. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's out of South Africa. Um, I can't think of what the, the, the kid's name is. He's a young young kid, but I bet you he's a killer collection. Do we want to look at your picture on Instagram, or is that too much to talk about ball pythons? Okay. okay. Cool. Just for a minute. It's okay for a minute. I just think everybody's okay. a little, little ready to talk about something else. I love all snakes. DJ, that's his name, yeah. Will, point, Will the podcast whore, pointed it out. All right, say, so I'm still looking. Um, Reptiles for centuries. Okay, well, I, I, I got a new sign for behind me, and it says, 
be a fucking wolf. Actually, fuck it. Be a lion. Yeah. Just that's gonna go up behind me. Um, I like currently it. working on my uh, podcast background. Well, instead of showing their video, let's look at your clutch. Blackhead. Blackhead. Spot nose. Blackhead. Spot nose. Spot nose. Yeah, that's Correct. what I see too. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now, which one did you think uh, might be bold? Well, the two in the corners, the top left and the bottom right. I, I knew they were leopard, um, spot nose, pastels, and they were just questionable blackheads. One was a little darker than the other, and this was when they first hatched, and I had no idea that those were allelic as well, but it makes sense. Like the yeah. bottom right is darker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one was a little bit darker. So I, I'm, I'm holding back the female just to have, and uh, the male sold. But yeah, no, no, you're right on point there. One's a spot nose leopard. That one's just a plain old spot nose. Pastel blackhead, straight blackhead. So, hmm. yeah, I would have to concur. I have to. I think he started another clutch. I'll have to look though after we get done here, just to double check my own. Uh, um, I just listened to your keys interview yesterday, um, mm -hmm. and you said he sired two clutches. Was two? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I don't have my book up here. I should have brought my book up. No, you're okay. I just, I literally listened to it yesterday in ceramics. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I just thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, it's neat how you're we're still finding these things out, how far down the road and what's, what's still to come yet, you know? Yeah. I bet we'll find there's only like six LA like complexes total because there's only six genes that you can break in the snake to make the color different that don't kill it. And we'll just be like, whoops, that's all we got. <laughs> all right. Uh, Taylor Scott, I'll be honest, I'm just here for the boas. <laughs> I've been having a lot of messages saying, you know, when's the next boa episode going to be? And so these two guys are going to hook you up today because I, mm -hmm. I don't know. Did you have any more like general questions for Chris before we moved on? Jana? Nope. Just general question. Okay, let's do it then. I just, no, nope, I'm just excited to hear about something besides ball pythons. <laughs> All right, this is going to be a pain in my to took us, okay? Because okay. I have like 17 tabs and dozens of localities, and we're going to try to do this, you know, fast I, or, you know, succinctly. But have I ever been succinct, Jana, ever, and at any time? No. Okay, so here's the criteria. We're going to look at a picture of a snake, and we're going to be like, okay, is it attractive? So that's overall aesthetics. But also, like, is it really expensive? So someone getting in would be like, oh, it's prohibitively expensive. Is it available at all? Is it sellable? Like, does anybody actually want to buy it? Is it, what's the ease of care? What's the temperament? Obviously, there's variability there. And then, like, ease of breeding and then size. So, like, this is sort of a general look at a, at the snake from a person who doesn't have boas or maybe just has mutt boas. Like, why they would want to spend a little more for some of these properties to, to add this new locality species that they're not going to, like, crossbreed with their mutts. So, it's not a morph game. It's like a, what is the inherent sort of cool features of the snake because these are all cool by the way don't tell anybody uh mm -hmm. that i hated any of these so even if we rank them low it's not because they're not cool everyone should go get some everyone go get 10 of each <laughs> but if you were budget were consideration in space which ones are like the better you know locality to get into does that make any sense at all <laughs> otherwise we would just talk about them but i'm going to try so to rank them Yes. So for those of us that aren't into boas, I just want to clarify for myself that the boas with morphs are usually the mutt boas, correct? At and this the point. And the are like the wild type from specific locations. Purebreds. Purebreds, where you have like literal genealogy and can prove back to the godfather. Hopefully on that part, that last part. Sometimes. Not quite as not quite as genealogical as I would say as like carpet people are. Okay. Yeah, it just depends on who you buy it from. Some people are like, here's my CITES records from 
Joe Blow in 1986 when the one time they came in and I got him from Billy and he got him from Janny and then here they are. Some people do and do like he smuggled them out in her pocket. Yes, and some people are like here's my family tree, uh but it's not as common to have family trees. Like crispy snakes will generate you a family tree of every animal she knows for her snakes that she sells. But that's not incredibly common in boas. Um, so it's more of a carpet thing. Right, but it should be a boa thing because it's the same thing. Right. I, yeah. I agree to, a, to an extent, yeah. And the other thing is there are locality morphs that I have excluded that are still pure. So you can buy pure anery longicata, you can buy pure anery nix, you can buy pure anery sigma. So, sigma so we are hypo. starting to see the pure locality. Yeah. yeah, and so they That's haven't more. been yet brought back into like a generic imperator mutt morph <laughs> melange so you can get both you can get a look pure locality wild type a pure locality morph or a mutt melange uh thing that god knows what's in it <laughs> do you agree I'm all Chris? about the mutt the kitchen sink <laughs> yeah let's just throw the kitchen sink at it it's fine that's it's all fine people right and i'm not yeah. i'm not actually like denigrating the mutts because that's mostly what i have it's just like that's what they are. Let's have an honesty moment. Let's reflect on a three-way species hybrid, which is what they are. Uh, even more. Yeah. So, like, uh, and for those those of us that don't know, what three? What three are they? Usually? Sigma constrictor and imperator. Okay. So species level hybrids, not intergrades anymore. They're species level hybrids. It's fine. That's how, that's how, that's the bed what, that we made and we get to sleep in it. So that's all right. Do you have mutt boas, Chris? Or do you just look at it? I do not have any. Um, I had, I had a couple regular boas throughout my, my couple, last couple of years, but I never really settled down with anything um, and tried to cross. I love moon glows, but I just don't, I don't really have the room for that, so to speak. I do, but I don't. I like I like the localities a lot better. Right, you don't have the room for something you're not that into at this Correct. moment. Right, perfect. Pico Wendy asked a, a question. question. Uh, I put it down. No, there are locality boas within all three species. Okay, so as long as it was never put into mutts, it's air quotes here. Pure. Pure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get in so much trouble. I'm so scared. <laughs> okay, let's go. Argentine boas. Ooh. Ooh. So this is a max pink. So like obviously phenotype is variable in the area. And this That's is like a more gorgeous, one. The pink one. Yeah, this is from Morelia Mafia and then Outworld Reptiles. Oh, Donated wow. these pictures. Thank you very much. Max pinks are selectively bred for max pink. Beautiful. They're awesome. And they're pure. 10 out of 10. So I had to put it up there so everybody could see how cool they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, the dark one's badass too, but the pink is just like, you don't get that color. Have you had Argentines, Chris? I am growing up a female T-positive right now. So that's a locality morph. Yes. So the T-positive is the, the Argentine and they also um, have Motley. Yeah. Isn't that weird that that it's happened crazy. like four times? <laughs> Yep. So, uh, yeah, she's growing up and, um, I'm looking for a motley het male, but, um, I don't know if, if time doesn't allow for that. My, a good friend of mine bought uh, a male visual P positive. So see, she's still got plenty of years to grow up though. So you're going to, so she's a T plus motley. No, she's just a T plus. Normal okay. You're just positive. trying to get into motley. I'd like too. to get a motley. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay, now, what do we think about these? They're big. Should I have? Should I like not ask questions, or am you I? You can ask, ask questions. questions. I'm, I'm unsure of the format here. Um, I don't know the format either, but oh, I made cool. it apparently. So, so uh, it's just <laughs> she may just mute me, guys, if I talk too much. So, T positive is that um, dominant or recessive? Recessive. Yeah. And then Motley is dominant, correct? Yes. Incomplete dominant. Thank you. Yeah. Incomplete dominant. With a lethal super. Uh, I think that yeah, I think the supers are lethal. But they're born, they just don't 
make it very long. A yeah. couple years. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> I made a mistake. All right, let's go. We're so slow. Had a, had a comment. What it sounds like. Oh my god, yes, but 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 uh it depends on which of the the, the systematics police get in there because they're going to so they have should we, we should read the question for the audio people. Uh, William says, from what it sounds like, Boa Day seems like it's used more taxonomic revision. And, I, and not just the, at the family level, which it does need, but just the genus Boa. They split the species apart, and then they didn't check all the localities. So Argentines and Longicata, which we'll get to, might actually get bumped up to full species, but we don't know yet. And then, then they didn't clarify their position on whether the subspecies held, because the subspecies police are out. And they're deleting subspecies every time a new paper comes out because nobody believes in trinomials anymore. So I'm going to refer to subspecies, but they don't technically exist as a taxonomic designation. And some of these probably deserve full species because they're like more than 5% different than the other bows. But yeah, I agree. <laughs> all right, 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 right. Okay, Argentine boas, they're big. They're pretty expensive right now. How much did you buy? I mean, I used a T plus, <laughs> so it's probably a They're kidney. That They're other coming. kid that you had, you had to <laughs> trade it. No, the beauty of it was is that it was a longtime friend that I've known for the last ten years that bred them. Mm. So, I got so it now you're sure he's right. taking care of your kid yes. that you sold. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's look at the satellite. So they're not all in all of Argentina. It's just this little sort of wedge shape on the eastern side of the Andes Mountains. So there's none in Chile, none down here. Too cold. It gets cold. That's why they're black, so they could warm up because we're on the other side. But to me, they're a little, I, I know they're cool, but they're like the base Argentina right now is a little expensive. Would anybody agree with that statement for what it is? Yes, but they are coming back down to normal mm -hmm. prices. I have seen that too. Quickly. So where do we think we want to rank them? It's kind of expensive. They get really big. They're really exciting looking. And they're not too rare. You can find them. And they have some morphs. So is it... I wouldn't put it S tier because it's too big. Jana, did you think it was attractive? Hell yeah. Jana thinks it's attractive. Yes. So like a C? You see, a, a, B? I don't, you're asking the wrong girl. We'll rank we all it. have to argue each other with each other. What's on the top? S would be S. like best. And oh. then the best ever. Right. Like I think it's kind of, of mid because they're great and their price is like coming down to something for pet people, but they're still breedable, but they're big. They're right. big. I think that takes away a lot because I think that we need to be careful as things come down to more attainable prices, we have to be careful what we are releasing to the general pop um, hobby keepers um, when it comes to size, because I think a lot of um, larger snakes, we're doing them a disservice by just tossing them out into general pop because people don't really conceptualize what it means to have a snake that's going to get big. I think it should fall around C. I agree. Um, as much as I want to be a B, but I, I agree with the C just because of what you just explained, Jana. Um, yeah. You know, it's like, it was like a baby sulcata, you know, five years ago. That thing was cute. Now it's 25 pounds running into the wall right here. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. 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 William about. does bring up a good point that they are cold tolerant, but that also makes Very them uh, so like, like a brettle, easy to keep, but like harder to breed because they need a little bit more of a, stimuli yeah. so like it sort of washes it balances out to me but i love them i swear i love them <laughs> they're amazing the ranking barely matters it's just a way of formatting the thought i have to keep repeating myself because i'm like you don't love it i do love it <laughs> that's right all right that's a sexy snake i will not it's be hot. keeping something that gets that big i'm, I'm sorry and they're not ginormous either. It's like, but like a female could easily hit eight feet, easily, yep. seven feet. Not a not a not a power fed. They're just like a you know a big robust female. So they can they can be rabbit eaters. Mm -hmm. So you got to be ready for that. 
Okay, we did it. So Ooh. that's the format, basically. So uh, this is crispy snake. It's wow. currently for sale. So if you feel so inclined to purchase it, uh, I, I I don't know. I just got a little a little flushed. I'm sure I already <laughs> looked at it five times and told myself I can't. Crispy has some quality material, but you might want to. You have a kid ready. You could trade it. I true. <laughs> Uh, Richard is saying that Snake Discovery has uh, 1.1 Argentines and a 14 by 14 by 14. That's fun. Just to give you guys an idea of, like, they take up space. Mm -hmm. That's max. Big time. But it's neat. Well, that's a cohabbing situation in a zoo. But, mm -hmm. like, they need a lot of space. Right. Yeah, I would, like, recommend a six-footer for a female boa over six and a half seven feet you know what i mean so like they can stretch out more than absolutely being curled up into a four footer in my opinion don't blast me <laughs> uh okay short shorties mm. this is the subspecies formerly known as amarali uh will it keep that status mm, i don't know do you like amarali Jana, or chris love them that's, that's they come? That's the color they come in. Like that's their wild type color. It's like a beautiful that, like, silver with this little like yeah. delicate little, little tail that's real small. So they live that's really. We're, we're moving up in latitude here. They live like here. So they're the, like the buffer between Argentines and the true red tails. It's crazy how close they all are. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how how like rapidly they change. And you're like, I mean, it's thousands of miles, so it's not that rapid, but. There's like a clear difference. And this is all on iNaturalist, by the way. So this is these orange dots are actual boa sightings. So you can go and like In watch the, the boas change latitudinally as you move up. <laughs> and they're in Bolivia and Brazil. And the things that are in Paraguay, which we don't have any in the hobby, they look more like Argentines, in case anybody's wondering. Mm -hmm. I think they're extremely attractive. Um Kind of expensive, but very like bougie. They don't get huge. They're pretty moderately sized adults, but they're like thicker. Like Solid. they're more blood python shaped. Not exactly everybody, but like if you're gonna have a boa that's like robust without yeah, being like huge. Really heavy bodied. Yes. yes. Um, that's these like guys. Me, but it's a like curvy the girl. It's <laughs> like the price. <laughs> It's too much of a like a dissuading factor, I guess, is my question. What is the price point on those? Like a thousand, fifteen hundred. Yep, for a good line. I don't feel like that's terrible. I mean, I but I'm dropping, you know, on male clowns at the moment. So one seems very doable. <laughs> well, and and they're also a lot of these ones are extremely slow growing, so you're not breeding your MRLI till it's six or whatever. About that, oh, so it's a long turnaround time if you're which is fine, right? Back. Good, right? Absolutely. Good, but right. like, like of all the snakes you can have that are super attractive, these South American ones are much slower growing. So then you're like, is it there are slightly smaller than Argentines, but like not by a lot. So is it the same as Argentines or is it a little bit better because it's a, a little punchier in terms of color? Uh, yeah, I would definitely have to go with almost almost A on that one in my preference. Whoa, A! Whoa! Perfect, but it's it's up Boom. there. That's, I mean, it's pretty hot. Yeah. And how That's big do they get? I'll be right back. Okay. He's so you depressed he's here get? right now. Uh, it depends. Some of them are quite short, like five, six feet, but some of them are a little bit bigger. It depends on if they're Bolivian or Brazilian, but I would say normal boa size which is like a six and, and I, i'd have to say a as well so you think the the aesthetics make up for it what is the what is the uh chat say chat we can go with a i literally don't care i'm just trying to like uh, get the William conversation says that these are his favorite um and they get really big heads like bloods william yes. like like you're like this is a, a different breed of being yeah. in this world Oh. Hi, buddy. Somebody woke up from their nap. Oh, oh man. Were we being too right? loud? Yeah. We Just ruined it. Yeah. Okay, so who is this? This is Lincoln. 
Hi, Lincoln. My snake helper, right? You help with the snakies? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little shy. All right. All right. I'll be right back. Bye. Jan, do you want to describe a uh, amaralite visually? I'll bring the picture back. Um, so they're like this really sexy gray, like pale gray. And then they have this deep, deep maroonish color that is on the saddles. And the saddles are... Um, more like squished rectangles. Is that what you call those? Very apparent. Yeah, sometimes they can be so squished they disappear and they become reverse stripes. And so they'll just be these little dots. So, so like there's the pattern of... is, is gorgeous. And then the tail is really short, which for me, that sucks because I really like when it transitions to that tail. Like, I don't know. So mm -hmm. maybe it is a B for me because I, I do love the the tail for me. It's just like, oh, ha, ha, ha. but the color is so hot and I love how big the head is. And I love that it's like larger bodied. So um, it's got just like a beefy head and it's just sexy. Is this it's also for is... sale? No, this is for sale. Okay. This is for sale. It's from Crispy. It's quality, con quality snake. Oh. All right. Do you think we should keep going? I don't know. Yeah, just keep going. I told okay. him it was fine. He's Mr. Mommin today, guys. Yeah. Okay. Trinidad, True Red Tails. I was back. All right. We're good. Trolls so, is on. So we're moving up. Uh, we're moving up. So now we're in like BCC territory. The artist formerly known as BCC, which is all of this is now boa constrictor, by the way. No subspecies, but whatever but the things that people think of as like true red tails mm -hmm. so i didn't do all of the localities because they're all kind of the same i just sort of bounced around but trinidad is one of the rarer ones that's more expensive so it is or it is not it is one of the rarer ones yeah okay well julie b is like scooping that up <laughs> so you're welcome crispy mm -hmm. she has a couple of them they're all hot i want to buy 10 of them but i haven't yet because i'm trying to be ten good out of ten. <laughs> That'd be good. It's still early. Like I said, so these ones are almost like so uncommon that I think it, even though they look fine, they look great. They're just so uncommon. Like waiting around to get your true red tail fix from a Trinidad true red tail. I don't know if it's worth it. What do you think, Chris? I don't think so. Um, unfortunately, it looks so similar to as we start going up you'll start to see them look a lot more similar when you get into the Surinams and the Guyanas and, and uh, I forget what the other one is, but I think we'll touch on it, but they, they all, they all tend to not be as drastic. I think as you, as you move in North. Right. Yeah. So like, the... well, you can even get like a mutt that looks like that. Nah, I don't know about all that. Look tail. That tail. Okay. Yeah. But, okay, well, coming but from yeah. a, a non-BOA person, I'm like, eh, that looks like a <laughs> mutt to me, too. So I, I for me, that's, uh, I could pass on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not the best picture, but this is such a rare locality that I'm like, whoops, this is all we got. All right, let's give it a rank. What do you guys think? You got to find the picture. D. And they, D. D, that's where I'm at, too. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, and they, are, they, they do get, like, true red tail sized, but they're not as big as, like, Peruvians. But... They have all the, the true red tail problems, like regurgitation syndrome. Uh, they need slow, f slow feeding schedules, etc. So, like, if you can't buy it, then it's not your best choice mm -hmm. to me. Peruvian true red tails. These ones are now one million dollars. It's blowing up. They're going through the roof. Why? Do you want to say it nicely, Chris? Because you're a nice person. I bet you'll say it really nicely. I think it's just uh, the rarity. Well, there was also uh, some creative individuals who just made up a price one day. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's been like creative, creative marketing with supply and demand. Yes. Yeah. 
they are beautiful in their own respect and they are different than I think a lot more different than I think a lot of the other ones that we're going over. Um, just color and overall appearance. So how far up so, on the map? So they're up here now. Okay. Um, and this is like the motherfucking rainforest. We're not in like kind of like the dry whatever. This is like deep in the rainforest where people get murdered by like mosquitoes <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> so they're really big. They can be very big, but they have like huge heads, like like classic true red tail gold color. Yep. Uh, Crutchfield has like some in his in his yard fa famously. So like they're like promoted, but their price is you know thou thousands of dollars more than other true red tails so what what would that make it for like a new person is it like the prestige move or is it hmm, like think, too inhibited price wise i feel they're too inhibited price wise but overall though i i really like them i don't i, I they I think, are beautiful yeah i think they would be in like the b line for me okay My i'll take it what do you think Jana? Oh, for me, that's like Are you a attracted to it? Whoa, <laughs> Jenna. So, Chris, do you have any of these localities that we've talked about so far? No, I do not have any of the Peruvians. Um, I have the Longicata, but I wouldn't say they're actually the Peruvian locality of the the gold and like this look, actual Peruvian red tail. So, I'm not even sure what the exact locality of the Longicata is, but I'm sure we'll get to that. We're getting there. We're there getting. We're going north. So no, I don't have any of those so far. That we've we've gone over. Yeah. All right, Ecuador black-bellied boas, which was the subspecies formerly known as melangaster, and then there's some dispute whether it really is a subspecies because it's back to the old map. Uh, Ecuador's here. So here was our Peruvians. They look very similar to Peruvians. They're just darker. Darker, yeah. They don't look like Peruvians to me. <laughs> Well, well in terms of like sexier. body size, scale count, uh, they well, they're, they're just sexier. darker. Yeah, more of the taxonomy. They're they're similar. No, so, I, like I even a long time ago, it was disputed whether they were a real subspecies or not. So, mm -hmm. if if they return subspecies or whatever, we, who knows if they'll even stick? Because they just are basically a Peruvian that's darker. Right, but, so like the same, into it. but they have adapted differently through natural selection. So now we have a darker one and a lighter one, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I, I prefer the darker a thousand percent. What's the price point on those? I don't think they're available, so... Damn it. <laughs> it Fuck I you, mean, mother. I, have you oh, ever sorry. seen one for sale, Chris? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, little man. But it, it's, it was maybe once or twice in the last 10 years. And it's you don't see them often, not at all. From like an old man on fauna, that was yeah, pretty much like somebody that's yeah. had them for thirty years, and you know, yeah, pretty <laughs> Isn't much. that always the case? Oh yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Beautiful. I mean, all the good stuffs on fauna, everybody. By the way, that's your pro tip. If you want like the weirdest, oldest, oldest. purest, bestest, <laughs> the old Fauna's man still alive, people. Yeah, check it out. Yeah. I think they're they slap, but because you can't really buy them whatever you know like it's it's, it's got to be like a c or d right I like you cannot it. put them that low i don't care if you can't find them anywhere they i know slap. but we're trying to encourage people to get out of ball pythons and buy a locality <laughs> boa if they can't buy boas then it, it doesn't matter how so much fine, it's left fine i will accept c but that really should be like an a okay so, I think you're just confusing how dark it is. Really dark versions happen in all of these localities because they're Don't polymorphic. Tell me how I feel, Jessica. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> all right, we're still going north. Suriname. Oh. This is a crispy snake. Yeah, I, they're, they're, they're pretty. I like the light tones, but not my favorite. Their tails are beautiful. As adults, they have some of the, 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 the deepest red tails. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is hot. Now, what's their availability? Great, because yeah. we still import from Suriname and Guyana. Very widespread. So the price is reasonable. A really well-selectively bred one can be expensive, but like if you just want one, it's like the imports pull the prices down a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
which you can be like, that's good or bad. But that means we have a lot of examples of them, not a lot of inbreeding, right. so depression. You can be really particular about what quality you want. Mm -hmm. And I skip Brazilian red tail boas because they're just also not that common. So I've been skipping things already, but they're, they also exist, but it's the same question. So this is like Guyana Suriname question. Is it worth getting into the one where they're common? A lot of selective breeding has been happening and there's imports, but the price is lower. Mm -hmm. Big that's juicy kinda, tail. That's where I'm at with the, with the Guyanas and Surinams. Uh, no, I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't. My buddy works with the Surinams, the same guy that has the Argentines, and he should be producing them this year. So I'm curious to see how his production is and and how he goes about getting them out, you know, to to the public and whatnot. And he's been working with them for I think this is his sixth year with them, and this would mm -hmm. be his first litter. So it's they're a, they're definitely a long haul. Mm -hmm. And then I, I have got Guyana with it, but we basically covered it. Like, they are so close together. They're basically the same. This is a wild-caught one. So they come out of the wild looking pretty good, you know, nice. There's different yeah. levels. Right. Um, and then I, you can selectively breed from there if you like peaks or whatever. But right. this one's for sale on the morph market right now. <laughs> and it's wild-caught? Yeah. So, like, is that good or bad? To me, it's good because it means there's a healthy level. Some of these locality bows that were imported as a pair and that's it or five animals and that's it so we are inbreeding them very tight very tight it's yeah. a problem that's a problem so like this to me feels healthy so i would recommend them more just because you you can do something we have like a long-term game yeah. forever it's very healthy as long as it's done with um healthy acquisitions as well you know you're not going out and harvesting thousands upon thousands and whatnot um, so I do work with the Guyanas. I have a I have a young pair, so that's what they were labeled as. So I have paperwork on them or sighty stuff. No, so they very well could be from Suriname. They, it, it's it's tough. They were sold as Guyanas, and um, they they look a little different. I pick mm -hmm. I pick which one the phenotypes that I like the best, and you know I'm going to start with this generation and see where it goes. Do you have you heard the rumor? that importers will take a shipment from Guyana or Suriname and just rename them Guyana or Suriname based on phenotype. Like they'll pretend the peak ones are Suriname and pretend the purpley looking ones are Guyana just yeah. because that's what people are looking for in those types. But they, they all might have come from Guyana. You heard that rumor? I haven't heard that rumor, but there's crooks out there everywhere. So I heard a rumor. I <laughs> I believe it. I believe them guys down there. I, it's like, it's like the Africa importers. They'll they 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 bring in acid. They bring in confusion. All right, so we're gonna sell the you know the acid to the Americans, and we're gonna sell the confusion to the Europeans. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna name them two different things, but it's the same thing. I mean, banana, coral glow. I mean, it just they're just getting their money. They they yeah know. yeah. I'm not that mad at it. I just it's just yeah. like a funny coincidence that all the Guyanas like magically look the same from the same vendor. And all the surnames magically look like they're picking the phenotypes out and then reassigning yep. them. All right. What do we, so like as a pair, like, cause either one, it doesn't really matter because they're almost the same idea, but keep it pure. If you, if you think it's pure or whatever, yep. what do you think a Guyana and or Suriname true red tail boa would be for a ball Python person? You do have to wait a hundred years to breed them. You will be <laughs> dead probably by the time it happens. You will sell them before you breed them. <laughs> That's the bow away, man. That's the bow away. I think that all of us ball python people could learn some patience because we're yeah. always trying to rush it. Um, I, for me, that's a B. Um, you may disagree or yell at me, but that's sexy. It's affordable. It's. I feel like that's a really good starting point for someone trying to get into to bows. You really have a, especially with the localities, you really have a lot of um, polymorphic selection. Um, so you can get what you like. There's availability. I just, I feel like that's a more, it's an easier sell when you're trying to resell them. Like I, I yeah, like people understand what it is, you know, they're like, oh yeah, true red tail. Like it's looks like the type and it's not so expensive. So like there's a saleability factor here that. Correct. Right. The more common. What about a, how do we feel about a? I'd be okay with that. Or B. If, if oh, I was Chris a, is like, Ugh. If, I <laughs> working, if I wasn't working with them, they would go to C. 
Whoa, <laughs> what a bird. <laughs> he is where I would like to see them. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, Chris is the guest. Final, final say. I'm putting them together. I think they slap so hard, I, I can't handle it. But, like, I don't know. I, they're... How many, there's a lot of them. So, like, I want the ones that are, like, the most bulletproof to me. So, I pick localities based on that. And they are not necessarily the most bulletproof. Because uh, I'm a baby. I don't know. I'd still <laughs> buy 10. Of, because of the cheaper po price point? No, because they're just BCC digestive tracts, you know? Oh, just okay. Sensitive, beautiful I feel princesses. Hence red and maroon tails out of those, too, I feel. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so beautiful, but I don't, I, I need them to be like good. That's a me thing, not anybody else. Okay, awkward oh, Orton's boa. So, Ortoni, this is the, like the most awkward part because this subspecies, I don't know if it's going to continue, and it's basically entangled wildly with Longicata. Also for sale, check it out now on Morph Market by BNS Reptilia. Logicata. Can you tell what it is, Jana? Pictures are tough. We need to get a little better, a little better lighting. Check it out on Morph Market down. Yep. There's Can you flip back to back. the other one real quick? The one that's not in existence and then flip back. So the babies are a lot cleaner um, than the adults. They'll they'll fill in and get a little bit more speckled. Um the crazy okay. thing about the crazy thing about this Longicata is that I, I got them. I got them four of them. I got a pair of light phase and a pair of dark phase, as they put it. Are they Rizzo? Line? Well, the, the guy that picked them up said that they came from Russo. So that's neither here nor there. You know, he did live in New York. Um, he said he picked them out up at an old White Plains show, or it was the Long Island show. And I know Vin used to do both those shows. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, that, that that's what they were. And they look like everything I've been seeing at the shows as far as, you know, your, your straight Longicatas. Um, but the, the white and dark phase, that makes me wonder if it's, if it's more of like that uh, Southern Peruvian area where they were a little bit more yellow and cleaner is the light phase. And as you move up into the, the Northern, uh, if that's the darker tone to them. Let's zoom in on this bullshit over here. Okay. So we're going over here. <laughs> Uh, so this part here is supposed to be or Ortoni, and this part here is supposed to be Longicata, but there are Longicata-looking things on the wrong side of the mountain. mountain. Huh. Uh, so Peru was open when uh, Ecuador was not, so they probably uh, smuggled them. Don't in tell me I said that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so these are like pregnancy belly. Things happen. <laughs> so these are mislabeled as Ortoni, but they look an awful lot like zero Longicata. And this is a problem. That's why I'm like Peru, Ecuador ish. But I think once we look at it, those, these two subspecies will get put into a clade together as like related things. So do we own Ortoni in, in captivity or Longicata? Mm. Mm. Keep calling them Londucat, everybody, because that's what they were imported <laughs> as. But the taxonomic status of what's happening here is not extremely clear. Okay. Hmm. That was mm. really dark, that one. That one's really gorgeous. It's patternless. It's a zero. Let's be honest. That it's is. a zero. Jeez. It has no pattern. That, that snake is like Fuck you, bitches. Nobody's seeing me. <laughs> and then there's some stories of like, uh, whatever, the, the stockle or whatever walking into uh, there's like a part where Peru sort of bumps up into Ecuador walking into the range. Like he couldn't get into Ecuador of uh what should have been Ortoni and finding darker and darker Longicata. Oh, that oopsies. are still, yeah. It's just because I'm in the go. right country, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this one is just like, keep, let's keep the names that we have right now, but let's just like shelve the fact that we don't know what the fuck we're doing and we'll worry about it 
later because I don't, it's not clear to me what we have is what we think we have, but we do have something that's cool and they are beautiful and pretty easy to take care of and like slender bodied, smaller. Mine, or how big are your adults? The lunch yeah. Um That female, I think she probably could have used another year, but she was giving me the, um, the signs of building and ovulation and whatnot. She was giving so you eyes, wasn't she? She was giving me the signs. I, and mm -hmm. I think that's, that's one thing that it, after working with them, uh, other boas or boas in general gives you more of an understanding and eye to catch things. You know, you don't really put you in tune with your animals. I think a little bit more because they're, they're so difficult, but um, I'd say yeah, you don't want them to push, push their face off just because you're like, well, you're only five. Right. <laughs> she was about uh, four foot, the female, she was tiny. The male yeah. was about three and a half. And I've noticed they have like very round bodies. Like they're yeah. not laterally compressed. They have a different body shape than to me i don't know if you've so like it's a different kind of animal definitely and they are it definitely look different than what i think of when i think of boa they have big I, I beautiful like it. bug eyes when they're born it's the wildest <laughs> so thing tiny. yeah they're very very tiny hat or uh very tiny litter like tiny just... like obnoxious like i have bo boas come out of a similar size mom that are bigger than a 2022 longicata oh yeah it's, just out of her cloaca is like boom already twice as big <laughs> yeah that's so they go for tiny came out so much bigger yeah it's crazy but and what's what's the price point on these pretty reasonable yeah yeah our, we're priced pretty uh pretty um aggressive Cute. i think they're anywhere from 250 to like 450 depending on your bloodline Blood. and if you have anery in them because there is a natural anatheristic in them mm -hmm. I yeah i've some of the lines are a little bit, I don't know, bougier or something. Like they'll, they'll, like the ones that do hyper mel or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. a, yeah. or they're silver -er, or they're yellow -er, or they're sort of in between and they get a little brown -er. That'll affect the price. But like two to 500 for a normal is pretty good compared to $4,000 for a normal <laughs> Peruvian. <laughs> yes. That's ridiculous. Now, for those of us that don't speak boa, that patternless, can you explain what that was? Because I'm confused. So that was probably a zero. And zero is and a the... zero is one we haven't got to yet? No, zero is a morph of oh, okay. Longicata that gives them no pattern. It's just like a patternless. It's like sterling, okay. but sterling came out of Colombian. Patternless. Okay. But they're in the wild. I would like to put in last, Ecuador. I'd love to see where you guys are putting this one. It's got to be S class. Come on, Chris. I, oh yeah, absolutely. As far all as all right, thank God. Otherwise, we would have to fight. Guys, <laughs> now great, all around great, um, baby. Okay, because I was thinking like A or S, and I was like, what if they say D, and then I'm gonna look like a total <laughs> idiot? No, 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 they're, no, they're like an imperator's <laughs> level of chill in terms mm -hmm. of like not regurging and cold tolerance and yep. humidity tolerance. But they like, sound like gentle, the perfect like intro thin. boa for anyone. Yeah, they and they're like they have some morphs that are pure still, but the price isn't insane, and they look and they slap all day. Okay. Nice. All right, I'm glad we all agreed. <laughs> all right, also available now. Check Ooh. out Morph Market, BNS Reptilia. One pair left. That's it. It's it's in the it's last in the last pair. Notes. Get it while it's hot. Get it before I do. Uh, and then this doesn't exist in captivity. <sighs> Never seen them. Unfortunately, that is air sexy. quotes. I, hard air quotes I, though. It's probably the I same thing. The what we have. What are those called? You mean the like the white in spots the, in, in the, the saddle? Yeah. Ooh, that's hot. You're weird, Jana. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't exist because like. We probably, this is probably a Longicata variant or something, right. but we didn't right. collect far enough north to get this look. We'll see what happens uh, if we like. Uh, so let's, let's just put them at, uh, where the hell is it? I can't find it. Help me find it. Did I not put it in here? Whatever, it's D class because you can't <laughs> buy it anyway. That's ambiguous. 
All right, I'm skipping regular Colombian because I'm mad at them and they've they're on my shit list and I'm not even gonna play. Okay. Okay. We're Don't going slide straight. Slide your DMs and be like, bitch, you forgot this and this and this and this. Just no. I'm along. talking about regular Colombian. Is the so they so I was let down. This has been 20 years in the making. It used to be most boas were imported from Colombia, so you had Colombians and you had Nicaraguans, which nobody liked because they were gross. Now all of the Colombians have been ruined and hybridized with everything else so like the generic bow you get is not a really a colombian anymore so i'm not even going to talk about them fuck them it's ruined we're talking about barranquilla which is a specific export location from colombia <laughs> that has a specific phenotype Whew. sorry i had to get all that off my chest i uh <laughs> You really feel. <laughs> I just can't handle it anymore. Like, I, everyone's like, why don't you have better snakes? I'm like, because they don't exist. Like, I can't buy a, like a very many snakes anymore that look the way that they used to look a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, okay. And Columbia looks like this, right? This shape. Can you all tell? So, oh, yeah. The Andes Mountains are here. So, this is the constrictor and perder divide. So there are Colombian true red tails, which I don't have a thing for because there aren't very many in captivity anyway. And there's Colombian imperators. And the mixing point here, there's a little like, you know, juicy divide in the Andes here. There's some snake spanking time happening right in here. So there's some bleed over here. <laughs> and there's bleed over along the coast. So you'll have like Venezuelans that look very true red tail intermediate very imperature but barranquilla is up on the coast so it's very imperature looking Whew. what is everybody's thoughts on barranquilla colombians they get they're, big they're super clean I, I i like how clean they they look the ones that i've seen uh recently being produced at first they caught my eyes um but I don't know, it's kind of like that that chaining on the tail almost looks like a ladder tail on a lot of them. But like you said, I, I just feel that they're, I mean, it's just a clean Colombian. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a classic look yeah. to me, Cla like classic from my childhood. But mm -hmm. so now I don't know what we have anymore. But um, they do get like normal Colombian size and they aren't like insanely expensive either. So, like, is there, like, a benefit of being, like, cheaper but but rarer but, like, a better version of something we have a lot of mutts of? I don't know. That part's a little confusing to me. I think overall, since they're a, a better looking and cleaner animal, I, I think they're uh, – I think they'd be better off as, as far as mainstream. But, like you said, that that's what your classic Colombian, from what I remember back in – when I originally started collecting in the early 90s – I mean, that's what, when I would think of a Colombian, that's, you know, that, that I was know. it. Yep. Back in the day, man. <laughs> yep, no, absolutely. They don't really, just like if you see a bow at a show, it doesn't look like this anymore because it's like 50% Nick and 25% Sigma and 25% Colombian. And you're like, oh, okay. It just looks different now. So if you yep. want to look. Yeah, I think they just get a, a, a Colombian size big, which is a little bit more robust. But they're like nice snakes. You know, pretty tame, yeah. pretty bulletproof. Jana, does it attract your ball python eyeballs to it? No. Um, no. It looks, like, it, it looks like the mutts look to me, which I know you're saying is not the case, that this is what they looked like 20 years ago. But for me and my untrained eye, I'm just like, eh. Um, also, there was a question from Evolve Exotics. So, so there know. are still pure lines of Colombians that I believe are pure. It's just like nobody promotes them that way anymore. Mm -hmm. So if someone wanted to start doing that, you would have an audience. Like I've had this pair for 20 years and I swear I got them off of a shipment from Glades Herp out of a bag while like the Colombian farms were still running. You could do it. I think I believe it in my heart, but I just don't know if it's, if, if an, you'd have to strum up support for your own project. And the fine lines look nice anyway. I just don't know if they want to like sell their product based on purity. Do you like fine lines, Chris? Yes and no. I think it, you know, they have a they have a spot. Um, 
but I, I prefer, depending on which one it is. I mean, I don't know the the, the way that those patterns come through on that. The one you like looks, a CBLT wow. look more than a fine line look. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when it comes to that, the Colombians. But I think the fine lines look better in some of the other locales we were discussing. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you think? Gina, C? Pico says C. C or D. Yeah. That's just not doing it for me. Sorry. And there was like a lot of talking about a lot of like. I think C. Too much, they're fine. too much for some my ball them, python some brain. Of them glow and are like really slap. So they're worth it. And they're worth maybe even like. It, taking the, the mail and putting it into your mutts because they, they they come out of the wild looking like a pastel like the morph pastel they just come out yeah. why clean. haven't you done that like breed back in what the look you're looking for it's a long road you you we've had this talk before about how uh, mad you are about the way they look now why why don't you take something pure and mix it back in so you have more of a a 50 kind of working on it but like Female boas, even Colombians that breed a little younger, they still take a long time. So, like, oh, okay. the fastest like long, way to do long, that would be long. buy a male and wait till he's two and then breed right. him to okay. your weird looking morph that you don't quite like the aesthetics of, which I'm sort of doing, but it just takes a long time. It'd be much faster just to buy a Baron Kia and probably like breed something else to it, I guess. Ooh. And you spend a lot of time like waiting for girls to grow up. So, even if you do like the cheat mode where you buy like a juvie off of fauna, that's two or three, you're still waiting another two or three years. What well, even by cheating, right? Now, the mutt boas don't they breed at like four or five instead of five or six? Yeah, sometimes it depends on what they are, what mutt combo, but yes, they can breed younger because they just, I don't know, hybrid vigor. Nicaraguans like to breed younger anyway to me. Yeah. So if they're half Nick, they like breed smaller, breed younger. It can be done. Your... Yeah, it can be done. It's not always the the best way to handle it. But like I said, you know, if you're if you've had the snake for years and you know it's it, how it eats and how it reacts when you open that tub and how it looks every year, and then all of a sudden one year it's like okay, well she's overly aggressive eating. She's at that three and a half, four year old age. You know, is she coming into maturity? So I definitely, mm -hmm. definitely see that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it might not be right, but who's going to, who's going to tell that snake no in the wild, you know? So mother nature does what she wants. You just got to. Yeah, Jess and I have talked about this a lot and she's like, don't shoot me in the comments because yeah. um, if she has a female that needs to go, she would rather breed it than have it, you know, rub its face off or yeah. lay slugs Sorry. because that's not healthy for the females and so Correct. um you just have to weigh the pros and cons of what you're doing and make the best choice for your collection and you should know your snakes and and i am pro like if that's what they're needing to do especially a boa because they're like they need to like slap and tickle and cuddle and <laughs> hang out for six months um just get the girl a man okay <laughs> i have a heart <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't know the right answer, uh, but I do uh, breed them young sometimes if they act like they want it. Yeah. Bad person. All right, Paraguayan Peninsula Boa from Ohana. So this is Venezuela. It looks very imperter looking, even though it's from Venezuela because they came along the coast. Yep. But I think it this locality actually keys out like a BCC. So it's interesting that like, the phenotype and the scale count has actually like diverged wildly. Okay. This one's from Ben Russo. Mm. Uh, how do you feel about it, Jana, from an aesthetic it's perspective? Absolutely gorgeous. Are you into the holes again? Like a lot of I holes like the in the holes. saddles. I she like loves her parents. holes, everybody. I love holes, everybody. Healthy. All the holes. Very um, and I like how aberrant the, the tail is. Is mm -hmm. that locality specific or is that just snake specific? Uh, I th I think this locality has a lot of holes in it. So you see how like the holes in the saddle translate to the saddle transition holes. Yes. That, so that's a thing that happens. AF. But like, I bet they. I where bet can I get? They... Where can I get this right now? <laughs> like that's how hot it is. You're yes, weird. Yes, as I, will, usual. I will take five. <laughs> oh, is this not like a hot snake in the bow world? 
It's a pretty rare locality. I think only Vin has them in the U.S. Is that jive with your perception? Chris? As far as what I've seen, yes, I'm, I'm sure somebody else has them. But like you said, it's that 72 year old guy that mm-hmm. you know only advertises on fauna if his bow was accidentally breed. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, no, they're they're beautiful, very light, creamy colored. The, all the keyholes is is very. Very, um, I like the head shape too. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I this this might be my favorite. <laughs> wow, and it's got wow. a intermediate head, so it's a not in, fully like imperator looking head, or and it's a little bit more BCC. So you can see like that it's a integrate zone animal. I'm digging uh, it. Where the hell's the country we're in? Where are they at? So this is the. It's right next to Aruba. And it's pretty close to Colombia at this point. But um, I, I think they're just so rare. I wouldn't buy like a, a trillion of them to like mm-hmm. make them the next big thing. I don't know how many got imported. I think Vin only has a pair now unless he kept babies. But there wasn't a ton to come in to begin with. That's unfortunate. Ohana, that's- are you in the comments? That's his snake. Tell me how many Vin has. Yeah, he might not be here. Definitely don't see him often. All right. What do we want to give it? I think C. I'm, I'm at more of a B level, I think. Whoa. Yeah. I Jana, wonder- please don't put it at a C. I might cry. It has to be at least a B. I understand that they're hard to find, but that's my favorite so far. Like, that's... The, You're the really drunk so most of the time. A lot of the imperators have bubbles. That's so that's not like a rare feature of that type. <laughs> okay. All right. B. Got a niche. I gotta find it. Here it is. Um. <clears throat> Panama. So we're just firmly in imperator. Now we're going up into Central America. So the the picture on the left is a hypo and the picture on the right is a wild type. It looks a lot like a Costa Rican getting mm-hmm. ready to warn everybody right now. Cause they're right next to each other. And the Panama bow was the source of the hypo mutation, which in the mutts we know of as hypo. So Jana, don't look at this one. Look at this one. What do you think? It looks like a turd. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is, this it does is not like, have a sexy tail it doesn't have like nope. the the gradient i mean for me this is like <laughs> like wow. fuck, get the fuck oh, out of here burn. like this this is like no this is a hard no for me this is like is the d the bad one like e this is well this shit. one is probably in dark mode you know bow has changed color right correct i don't care it's shit <laughs> it is a <laughs> pile of shit so if you're saying this about this and our guest keeps Costa Ricans, I am scared (laughs) about the next slide. Sorry, Chris. I'm I'm always open for criticism. All right. Oh, man. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think Panamas are cool because they're smaller, pretty resilient, pretty rare, but like common enough. And you could have like a pure hypo Panama. See? Shit. Lindsay is like my my. They're a little bit not perfectly (laughs) colored. Thank you for the validation All right, from Jana. the well Python world. I, I appreciate it, Lindsay. All right, Chris. What, what has score my back do you here? give it as a connoisseur, a man um, of taste? I, I have to. That one was definitely not a good representation at all of it. Um, I, I, for the for the availability and the size and 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 just how good they are to hand, uh, keep it, it would fall in the the B realm. But I think it has to be put in C, just because. It's less common than Costa Ricans. Yeah. Yeah, it is like a pure one. Even so. though we do get imports from there every once in a while. <laughs> oh my God. The brown slug. <laughs> uh, all right, that's Jana. Snake. That's like a, a cinnamon kiki. I was just going to correct They don't, they don't gonna all say. look like that. You got to think yeah. about like there's variation. All right, whatever. Okay, Savage, which is <laughs> an island off of Panama. And they look like Panamanian boas, but because they like drifted out there and are weird, they've sort of diverged. <laughs> so they're almost all hypo or super hypo. They're very reduced. They get like reverse stripes a lot. 
It's like a thing for them. And they, they used to have full subspecies status. They look pale and sort of greenish as babies, and they get a little darker as they get older. This is an older one. Also for sale on Morph Market if you want a Pearl Ooh. Island boa. Local boas. They're interesting. I, I, I at one point in time Jana's I Jana's not amused. Well go ahead. A, it's not the best representation, but I mm-hmm. uh, I mean they're not always gonna look perfect. Uh, it, they they definitely I liked I liked their size. I liked I liked how the, the pattern was kind of very you can never you know guess what the parent's gonna be like the pattern's gonna be like. Some have the very thin saddles, some have none. But overall, Sorry, Chris. <laughs> Jana's laughing at this comment. Which was, no, there's three of them in a row. <laughs> so a whole lot of math for me. And can we politely decline on this one? And then that was like, that's as ugly as my ex granny's panties. Oh, well. Uh, so right. like, I, I don't go out of my more. way to find like the most attractive examples because then you wouldn't see like the, the breadth. But there are right, better right. looking ones than this and there are worse looking ones than this. But if um, you want like a very small insular reverse striping boa that's locality specific and still commands a good price, and breeds very small. Yeah. I, they I do don't grow hate up it. to be brownish, but so do most boas. I don't hate it. There's still contrast. There's still like a gradient to the tail. There's a, a, a difference in pattern. I can definitely see that it's its own unique thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's not for me, but I, I understand where it would be appealing to some people. So I don't like, it's not a brown slug that I, I need to like kill from the industry. Um, <laughs> but it's not something that, that grabs at me or makes me hot, but I understand its merit. If that makes sense. Gotta be hypo. Definitely gotta be a hypo in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, I mean, like, like a B or C for me, like it's not terrible. It's just not something I would get into. What do you think, Chris? I agree with the C. Um, like it has its qualities to maybe be a B, but I just think overall it, it just doesn't have that much appeal. So Will yeah. Hell Heat says uh, people have them, but no one really wants them. Do you think it's overpriced right now? Like the current price on Morph Market, I don't know what it is, 700 yeah. 500 something like that. Do you think that's overpriced since it basically looks like a hypo I think so. mutt? Or do you think that's... If the price went down, you'd be more interested in like adding it to your project no. or to your colony. Definitely sway it more if it was a different price point. I just don't think, okay. yeah, I don't think they're driving that kind of money when you have Argentines that are out there driving that. Mm-hmm. Right. And Argentina There's now is so many other localities that are better. It's so, yeah. I, for me, it just wouldn't get my interest or my time. Sorry, Pearl Island. No hate. I mean, literally, it's not shit. I just, it's not. It's not what I would get excited about. Uh, so a lot of these islands that are off the coast exist. Pearl Island, by the way, is really small. Can I find it? Oh, wow, they're up there. I don't know where it is. It's one of these islands uh, down here. They're usually, so like a couple million years ago, we had a more intense ice age. We've obviously been been doing like glacial periods and interglacial periods, but a lot of this was under or was above water. So these aren't necessarily boas that got on rafts and like drifted out to an island. They are relictual populations left after sea levels rose. That's wild. So, because they don't, boas don't do that good on rafts, it turns out. So they don't usually raft to stuff. But like, so this has been here for 2 million years or whatever, doing its own thing. It's obviously related to the mainland because it was cut off from them. But, so I think they're cool from just like a, a pure, you know, biogeographical bio-ge- perspective. Mm-hmm. They aren't my favorite look. I like the some of the other islands, like the Lesser Antilles boas. But, mm, I, don't, I don't know what you guys said. See? B? Yeah, see. I'll go with whatever. <laughs> I think they're too house. expensive for what they are. Boas over balls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brian. All right. Okay. Yeah, they're 100% not the best pictures. So usually they're just pictures. But this is how they come. If mm-hmm. I pick the best of everything, you would want to buy all of them. 
<laughs> She's okay. trying to find a neutral middle middle of the road yeah. example. Like I cheated with the Argentine one because a Max Pink does not look like most Argentines. Like I swear. That's like the best thing you've ever seen. Yeah, that's um, beautiful. It was pretty hot. Uh oh. Yeah. Nicaragua. <laughs> That's a T pause, isn't it? Or no? No, I pulled it. This okay. is Chris's snake, everybody. It's That's sold, it. though. I just picked yeah. a normal just to show the wild type. Can you Can see, you, Jana? Is this the one that you said was the same as the one that I said looked like shit? No, the Costa Ricans look more like Oh, that. okay. I'm like, because this isn't, this doesn't look like shit to me. I'm so surprised. Like you like Nicaraguans? Yeah, I mean, like, I'm I so surprised. Him, I like he makes, him. but the rules are made up and the points don't matter with Jana. That's what a fucking opinion is, bitch. <laughs> I like, know, that's just crazy. 100. Okay. I think they're mean little shits. I mean, I love them for it, but they are mean little shits. Do you agree, Chris? Please tell me. Uh, yes and no. They're, they're, they're not as mean as the Costa Ricans, um, but they're definitely. <laughs> They're definitely a little bitey as babies. Um, the normals are they're they're very they have a lot of different colors in them. They're very um oh, uh, I see that. Yeah, they're very intricately colored, which makes them unique. And um we had T positive. Can you today. blow that up to the whole slide for me? Because I don't have my glasses on. The oranges on a T positive are insane. But um they were they were pretty fun. I yeah, like, I the, like that they're the, really busy and there's like dark dots and there's green and there's mm -hmm. like maroon and there's like orangey yellow i i like i like the way it looks okay i like nicks too they're just little shits mm -hmm. not all of them not all just everyone that i own my, my breeding shit. trio was really really nice very good demeanor but um i went to add a, a hypo pet tea positive and man she was a firecracker yeah, Ooh. and sometimes they don't get better. Sometimes they 100% get better. But She's I don't horrible. trust any of my Nicks yeah, or yeah. partial Nicks. I don't trust them ever. And I'm an adult, so I, should, I shouldn't be scared. But uh... Uh, That's the tough thing with a lot of these dwarfs. Um, as, as we move farther up, you know, Central American stuff like that into the, the dwarfer bell was, you know, they're just, as soon as they're born, man, the, everything wants to eat them. Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they got to be feisty. So let's look at the map. We've been uh, drifting further north. So I so I guess I put Costa Rica in the wrong spot because Costa Rica would be next, then Nick. Um, There are lots of ranches and farms that still ranch Nicaraguan boas and still import en masse to the U.S., still import, you know, annery type two that are locality Nick still. So you could get lots of genetics if you want. They're all evil. Okay, everybody? <laughs> Satan. But I think, like, the, the gem here is, like... What she's trying to say is this was a snake that was in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> I just, like, I really like the Central American T-plus that is the Nick T-plus. So, like, the Birkstone version. It has a very weird color palette. It almost looks like glowy plastic see-through... Have I don't know. It's of, the well. It's a locality a morph because I have no effing idea what you we, just said. We talked about it on the the morph one. Don't See, expect me to remember stuff like that. I'll, I'll just, send you some T pos <laughs> pictures later, Joe. Yeah, I have okay, T pos too. It's just it's a different quality than VPI, than regular albinos, yeah. than boa and caramel. It has a a wild like clear look. It reminds me of. I don't arms. know, like a, like a highway ball python or something. Like there's like this weird level of pigment that's ch changed its mind about how to function, <laughs> right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, oranges and reds are intense, right? It's just it just changed its mind how to make color and it became like a red, pink, orange, whatever, purple snake. But it's different yeah, than rather. VPI. It's not like it like absorbed a little bit of the melanin and everything else is the same. It's almost like it changed color completely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's hot. Still <laughs> evil, but hot. So what do we think about like a normal Nick? Should someone buy a bunch of normal Nicaraguans, no morphs, and just breed normal Nicaraguans? No. Never, I say also. Jana. No, I, I'm not a fan of the assholes. Like I can take I can take a hit from a snake all day long, but I'm not gonna purposefully get 
like my favorite snake is the white lipped and I don't have one because I just don't want to get fucked up every day. <laughs> I do think like there's there's a universe where this could happen, but like there are better looks in localities that are right nearby that are similar that like if you want green or you want orange, I just like it for its T plus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what do we think? I think for availability and how cheap they are. Yeah, and they're like 60 just, bucks at a show. Yeah, and very farm. tolerable. I, I, I put them in the, the B class. But mm. yeah. What do you yeah. think, Jana? Mm, I would not put that above a, a C, but I probably would put it a D. <laughs> so if, if their price was better, like if more people wanted them, just like a regular Nick. Like if they were like, like if you put a Colombian on a table, you could probably do a hundred or a hundred. Say they're like sixty dollars, like because they the get fuck imported out a lot. Like, get the fuck I out! Think, like, I think, no, I mean, fuck! I'll break corn snakes if I want to sell a snake for sixty bucks. <laughs> fuck you! No, a lot of them get sold. And it's like, a jackass. Like, why would you have a jackass boa when you could have amazing boas, and you could have a sweet little corn snake for sixty dollars? Like, that makes no fucking sense to me. No. Chris, are you going to defend yourself? Like, well, two years ago, the T-positives were up around 250 275 They've changed mm-hmm. a lot with everything, you know, the whole price market going down. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, no, they're just – yeah, for something that it's going to be feisty to begin with, if, you know, if they fall below that 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 100-point, you know, price range, what is it? What is it really worth that? You just got well, It's just I hard mean, to convince, like, a pet person to be like, this right, is a little that price point fireball. is 100% – pet price point and i sell to a lot of people that have kids so this is not something that i can market and feel good about like putting that into the hands of a kid and them getting their face bit off <laughs> like that's not that's not good for anybody and so at that price point it is 100 percent a pet quality animal and i'm i'm not about that so it looks great i like it i i that's a no for me let's just do C. Hard no. i feel like we're doing a c they are like available. You can make them nice. They're smaller. They breed younger ish. They breed smaller. So there's like benefits, but there's there there's like the there's too many imports and it drives the price down. And so there's really no unless there's some morph attached I'm gonna to it. Start singing, Jessica, if we don't move on. All right. I'm just trying to be nice to people who really like their Nicaraguans. There's somebody right now who's like clutching their little boa and they're like, Why do you hate my baby? I don't hate your baby. I don't Corn hate Island, baby. which is a locality you, off of you Nicaragua. Rock, you rock your Nicaraguan. If you don't mind the feisty, you go for it. I have a little baby hognose that's feisty, and <laughs> it melts my soul. So you do you, people. What do you think, Jana? So this is one of those like islands off of the country. They're this is they, like this is like the second or third turd snake. Third. <laughs> me. I don't even want to rank this. Can we just move on? quickly like just nope. move on i don't i don't want to talk about it i don't want to look at it anymore it's so they're like, rare i don't care it's so a like rare it looks turd. brown to <laughs> you but like at night it turns like silver gray with pink and purple highlights so you need to think about it the right way. Yeah. i just think there's not enough of them so people should breed them so we still have them what do you think uh I agree. I definitely think more people should breed them. Um, I, I don't think it's for everyone, especially like, you know, we just discussed that picture, but they do have a lot of color variations to them and they're very manageable. They're very, mm-hmm. very, um, very stay small. I mean, like you could house them in a 55, 40 very easily. Have um, you seen a corn Island for sale in the last like four or five years? Yes. Be- okay. Uh, you have seen them. Like I haven't even seen one for sale. Yeah, not many. I think only by two separate people. And once again, it was on fauna. But they're, mm-hmm. they're still not even that bad. They're a couple hundred bucks. What I'm hearing is if you're a boa person, fauna <laughs> is the place to be. It's where Hell yeah. Happen. All right. You got to defend yourself against Jana's uh, tirade yeah. of so much, shit. So that one is. Jana's going to be like, this one's attractive, but this is the exact same almost aesthetic as the Panama, but just in a different mode, like dark mode, light mode. I think, yeah, definitely agree with the mode. They're definitely cleaner as adult or as the as the as young ones. Um, they get a little bit darker as adults, but it's not a it's not a black dark. Like the the female is almost like a bluish steel metal at certain times. And, and I don't I, I don't like back me up here. They to me they look green as babies. 
What do you think about okay. that? Yep, they like, do a shade. Yep. It's the weirdest thing I've ever. It's not like a like a like a iguana green. Everybody no. at home. It's like this weird like a layer of melanin over a layer of yellow over a layer of brown that just happens to like mix together in your dumb eyeballs to look green. So it is, I think it's extremely cool. It's pretty crazy. And the oranges on the, the side saddles, like it's hard to see from the top photo of these, but the Costa Ricans have some of the most intense oranges coming up the sides of those tails without having a morph. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Jana, what do you think? Hit us with the Jana. Yeah. Don't, don't hold back. <laughs> You I have no strong feelings either way. I'd be interested to see a side picture of the orange because I do like orange and boas. Um, I do like the green base. Um, it's it's very... I, I don't have strong feelings either way. Either. How much... This one's for sale um, now, everybody. Uh, yeah, on Warp Market. Only males available. Do you, do you feel like you sell them well? I'm curious because like Costa Rican crosses you don't see that much you see a little bit a little bit more than some of these but right. do you feel like people know what they will see when they see it or are they look like what you're done uh, you do get a lot of questions i display them in a uh, tower cube with the tar Hamar and so that you can see the distinct difference between them so i get a lot of questions and people ask about them um the people that have boas they they understand them and they they know about them um but uh, I, two years ago, I had a litter of nine, I think it was. And then this year, she gave me a litter of 13. Um, mm -hmm. They've been selling, but it's not like they're flying off. I have a lot of people asking about them. Somebody just picked up a trio. Um, but you, you, don't, you don't see the, the pure ones too often. There's a few guys selling them. Mm -hmm. uh, but they also have a T-positive. Two of the Costa Ricans. Another one. <laughs> we have so many poet tea positives. Yeah, That's great. That seems to be the most common one. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean it's fine. I'm I'm not mad, but like, keep it pure first and make some pure ones, and then and then morph it out. It, it'll oh, yeah. happen. No, yeah, I like Will, I like them a lot. Go ahead, Jana. Will had a question. Is it blood sharp and T plus that create a super nice orange boa? No, if you did a sharp and a T plus, you wouldn't see anything. So, like, if you want like a yeah. all the dragon variants or phoenix variants, you would need blood and then either a T plus or a T negative. Yeah. Is that your question? So those all look red as babies, and they grow up to be sort of orangey white. Yeah, I think the T negs are the red dragons, right? T negative and bloods. So the I don't know what the the call is red dragon. The sharp has a different name. Phoenix is Marissa. Burke and T plus or Burke and blood. What is El Diablo blood? And oh, I don't know. <laughs> There's a bunch of dumb names. Blood and, and leopard maybe. <sighs> I'm not going to look it up, but, <laughs> but there's a lot of them. They all look pretty good. I actually like the Phoenixes so T plus blood, the Burke T plus, um, but it's probably an, e an evil little shit. Uh, yeah. These guys, yes, you want to pop these guys, you're gonna get hammered. Um, so I try, I try to get it all taken care of within the first couple of weeks of them of be, them being born, get their sexes straight. And maybe bows are tough to sex. I mean, uh, have you had difficulties over, say, a corn or a ball python, Jessica? I just do the like the the rub method. Okay, so you don't even pop them; you just rub mm -hmm. the field for the heavy beans. Okay. If you rub somebody enough. <laughs> find out they what, they, what they got in the old gear. <laughs> so usually what I'll if do is I'll like, set, up, then you set know. up babies and while I'm setting them up I'll let them like run through my hands and you can feel it and then you're like okay I think I felt, felt it or I think I didn't feel it and then I'll just double check two or three times like to confirm girls are girls mm -hmm. and I've like probed to double check my feeling but I it's such a it's such a good method that I don't even probe anymore uh, sorry, all the people I sent Miss Sex Bows to, but <laughs> <laughs> to me, like you can feel their little hemi peens like snap back like a rubber band as you like pull along it. It's like so like dramatic of a, a sensation. You're like, man, this is like the best sexing technique I've ever nice. done. So I would do it if they want to kill you though, harder, <laughs> harder. 
And these guys, now these guys are Russo. These did come from Russo's bloodline. Um, I have the paperwork on the mail. He was he was sent to my good buddy, the one that I always talk about that breeds boas. And you want to shout him out? Sure, it's KL Constrictors. It's uh, John and Haley. They uh, they work with a lot of boas, mostly boas. And um, he got these way far back. I don't know. In 2014, he had them, and then in 16, he was like, ah, "They're taking too long to grow. I don't want them." And I was like, mm -hmm. "I'll take them for the right price." And I just literally sat on him for a couple of years, let him grow up. And yeah, he picked the female up at a show. So I don't have pe paperwork for the female, but um, the male was definitely Russo blood. So. so let's go back one, Jana. Uh, Will says he thought Ozzy has orange boa. So Ozzy has habanero. So leopard, BPI, hypo. Okay, so deep he also makes, I think, sun dragons with sharp, whatever that version is called. Mm -hmm. And then evil says uh archangels so that's a archangels are vpi t plus and central american t plus so nick t plus double homozygote which are cool looking um freak made the first angel which was costa rican t plus and ca t plus does that make sense jana <laughs> nope. yes it does oh, like me <laughs> uh, I like Costa Ricans. I uh, I've seen like a hyper mel one on Fauna that was like black, like Ooh. Argentine boa, black with like yellow, like almost like a really dark Peruvian. Yeah. But it was a Costa Rican, and it was big, mm. like really big. Um, so it's a, obviously like a, a different locality, like a mountain version. Or, di so, or is it diluted? I don't know, but right. I was like that slaps old man on fauna <laughs> <laughs> i didn't buy it because i i don't need any more but all right we're still going up central america honduran mainland boas they are also a brown snake they also have color on the side they're also born kind of green looking at he's just like coiled up on a on a hook no no, no i couldn't I know. find I'm a better about, picture like, the orange on the side fire belly like the speckling like so I have a separate category for fire belly because that's okay. Roatan Island or whatever. Okay. But like this is like the mainland type. So so you don't see them that much to me. Mainland, not the mainland. Right. I'm not mad at it at all. No, that orange is really. I think sexy. we forgot to rank Costa Rican also. Yes, we're we're losing our minds. Uh, did we rank it? Am I drunk? No, Where is no, it? No. I'm I'm at B with them. I I I I think they are very underrated for boas. It's the white one, like that's like four in. The, there you go. Is it? Is it? Like it's that's the BNS. Oh, one? I missed. I mixed up laundry uh, okay. before. It's hard to read, even for me, and I'm looking at it. So, what did you think, Jana? He says. Uh, B. I said B. Yeah. A B is fine with me. Like I said, I I'm I don't I'm very neutral, so B is fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B is fine. I think they should be more common, but and they're common enough to buy at a cheap enough price, and because they can look green, that's interesting as like a baby on a table. But then you got to convince somebody that they should like handle it enough to make it nice. So like B B is solid. And they've honestly they've held their price. The original receipt is the same thing that I'm selling them for this year and two years ago. So is that awesome? Like locality bows are rare enough that they rarely they don't do too much of this. They're they're mostly just like I'm going to be the same price for 30 years, even mm -hmm. like adjusted for inflation. It's just like just this weird COVID time that like Argentines and Peruvians went crazy to no. me. All right. Hondo mainlands, what do we think? They are so not common. I don't think they should rank high, even though they're like basically the same idea as a Costa Rican or a Nick. If you can't find them, then it should be lowest rank because then why are we talking about buying them if you can't? Because maybe someone should buy them, just like these. Uh -huh. Can't find these either, but they're hot. I don't know about the actual locale, the Bahia Island locale, but I know what's his name's got fire bellies that he's breeding. Yeah, a lot of people do, and they're sitting on them like gold mine. Yeah. 
Yep. Okay. I think he this has used to, here. This used to be uh, more common like 20 years ago or whatever. Yeah. But people like want them. They like them. They're really red. They're like, they're actually like Hog Island's cousin island. Okay. In the, that area. And they're just like, if they're really nice, they're like really, really nice. So I, people should find these and breed them, even if they're rare to me. Yes. That's on what the do you think, Jana? Can you see it? I, I'm Googling because I need to see more. <laughs> they're definitely on the bucket list. That's definitely something I would like to work with in the future. Can you tell? And, um, definitely uh, get involved with some, some of them. They are, they're I, nice. I really like I really like them. Um, but mm -hmm. because they're hard to find or people are hoarding them, um, they, they probably have to be like an A or a B instead of an S. Yeah, probably. Yeah, if absolutely. you can't find any, then it's fine. But, but I think people, but if you see sexy, them, you yeah, should yeah. buy them and you have a yeah. thought of them being pure. Okay. We're doing it, guys. We're getting through it somehow. We're trudging. Hog Island. Lost in Snakes also has a question. a sister island to the last island. Um, it's how different they look, too. Yeah. Wild. They, I think but, they look more like the pearls than, than anything. Mm hmm. So if you look up like a like a map, so these were all like Roten and like the, the island next to it, the island next to it, and um, Hog Island are all were all mainland Honduras two million years ago. So all of these were boas that were left behind, and they all did something different. Yep. So like it's Port a similar too, right? body. What? Sorry. The Port Islands in there too, right? Which island? Say again. Corn, the Corn Island Boa, aren't they? Corn or... Island is on the other. It's a different island chain. Okay. Corn Island is further down, I think. Gotcha. All right. But they're all that. They all have the same problem. Like they were like a sea levels rose and trapped boas somewhere. I think this one is great. People still love them. They're really colorful. They're pretty nice. They don't get huge, but they don't get. They're not the smallest, but they're sort of intermediate. They have like the best promotion in the world, which is being on Camp Can Kinnon as right. like a species that he keeps outdoors in Florida. And so people who don't know anything about boas are like, do you have a hog island? <laughs> I'm like, no, but I probably should. Because like of the localities, this is the one the most people know. I mean, I think like that, that are like a rare island type. Yep. What do you think, Jana? Are they iridescent? Because some of the pictures on Google are showing that they're like iridescent. All bows are yes. iridescent. For the most part. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like if they're a darker boa or the darker parts of the boas, it's easier to see the light refraction. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty neutral on this one. It's it's not flipping my skirt up. What? They have a hypo variance as well, I believe. I'm not sure what else they have. I don't know. So like the like sunsets or whatever are the Panamanian hypo hybridized in. You could argue that some of them are more hypo like. Hypo esque. Hypo esque, not hypo the gene, but hypo the, <laughs> the phenotype. Right. I agree. I don't I, know. I, There's I don't only know. ever like a couple hundred on the island, so how much diversity came? But they're extremely popular now. Mm -hmm. Still. Very affordable. Mm -hmm. Not like insanely priced, but not $80. Mm -hmm. I would give this S class. What do you think, Jana? I wouldn't. <laughs> Come on. It's so hot. Okay. Chris, what do you think? I need you to. I, I can't sit in. on the S class. Mm. I think it has its uh, opportunities with S, but I think it would fall with the A. It's like, I'm it's, okay with that. I can do a. I just like it you is the, like an S. I'm perfect sorry. pet boa along with Longicana. It's like the right size, color, whatever, easy, whatever, nice price point, good, easy, not easy to breed, but fine. Okay. Um, Lost in Snakes had a question, as wanting to know if we know what Aussie's white tail boas are. I think those were like sharp IMGs or something that. Like desaturated the the tails so much with black that they like reversed. Do you remember that, Chris? Am I making yeah. that so up? They're they're mutts. 
take right? a reverse, yeah. Take a reverse stripe on the tail. Uh, Lisa says S. Yeah. Uh. All right, whatever. A is pretty good. I'll I'll take it. As long as Longicata is in S, I'm happy. <laughs> Belize mainland boa. So we're still working up Central America. There's too many countries. You know, like Brazil has like two localities, but like Central America is much smaller square area. And we have all the same. We have like 500 localities just because it's a different country, different export process. So all of this variety would be in Brazil, but Brazil has been closed for a long time. <laughs> Chris, do you have snakes? <laughs> maybe like a few. <laughs> Maybe maybe shout yourself out again um, and what you breed for those. Yeah, so uh, there we got a few, uh, mostly ball pythons, uh, around 150, 160 ball pythons, and then locality boas. Maybe like I think six or seven different localities. Uh, colubrids, which would be bull snakes, pine snakes, Mexican black kings, different varieties through those. Blood pythons, working with some womas. Have a pair of scrubs, so I have a I have a little bit of an array. I do work with a few. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just a few. <laughs> Not All many, right. though, guys. Yeah, oh. we were gonna do a normal interview, but then we decided he just we just talked about boas. It'd be more fun to just like riff about boas. It, yeah, if you want to hear more about um, BNS Reptilia, he's been on numerous podcasts and gives in really great interviews. There's a really great interview by Keys Constrictors. Um, you've also been on Warfels, right? Warfels, mm -hmm. yeah, a couple. Where you give like a facility tour? Yeah, actually, he did a facility tour. Warfels did a facility tour here, uh, two separate parts. Um, yeah, Keys will be on Herb Collectors in a couple months. Um, yeah, so we're doing a few. Yeah, so there's lots of um, good interviews out there. So that's why we're just kind of doing something different and fun because we assume you you've heard uh, all the good juicy details from Chris. <laughs> All right, it's been two hours. Do we want to stop and keep going later, or do we want to run through them fast? Or what do you think? Is there any in here that are just like heartthrobs that I have to see? Well, let's just look at them and I'll just name them. And then you okay, can decide yeah. if you have a heartthrob feeling. Because we still need okay. to get to Tara go. Mars, which has been S class. Okay, go. Um, Boom. Belize mainland, pretty rare uh, for, uh, you know, another Central American boa. Crawl K, very small, probably should be like A class for just like sheer smallness and cuteness and pet friendly. Almost anery. Yeah. That's, yeah. How how available are those? Uh, mid, mid, kind of. Like, okay. like I, ben, I actually ben really puts like them that. out every year. People, other people put them out every year. West Snake yeah. K, also a Vin item. This is a picture from Ohana. Oh. Not as common as Crawl or Cocker, but also small so like eh, yeah, you know the crawl is sexy af it needs to be like a cocker is another like annery looking one also extremely small could probably breed in a whatever a, you know 40 I, long easily <laughs> um you know mid common i would say like cocker and crawl are like the same idea just different localities both good i like the other one better keep going El Salvador, uh, these are like uh, the uh, most grungiest things, but this is the source yeah, of yeah, blood. So you can have pure blood. Move El along, sister, let's go. Clouded boas, they are my favorite boa I can't own. Every one we've imported, uh, like the ones that went to Europe, all had like a hereditary uh, bone disease and they all died. And I'm pretty sure all the ones in the US are all dead too. And, and wow. um, those are really unique. They are <laughs> awesome. They've been yeah. isolated from mainland boas for two million years or some shit. And and all the other lesser Antilles islands, uh, white people came and ruined everything and killed them all. So we just have like Dominicans and San Lucia. So these ones are just like really aberrant all the time, and yeah, they're, they're, they're cool. still there. And they're very interesting, but basically not in the hobby. So uh, D class fail. <laughs> yeah. Orpheophis is the other one that's from those uh, that island chain. They're also like super aberrant, like weird. Whoa, uh, there's like jigsaws. flowers on its back. There are more of these in the hobby, but most of them, I think, are in Europe or old guy's basement on Fauna. Right. See one, I would buy it, but they're so rare. So if you are listening and them. you are an old guy with a basement full of really cool shit, please hit us up so that we can do like a facility tour or something. No, the, that's the not 
how old guys do it. You have to. They don't even know exists. Them, so shut have to up. Send them a me money dream. order. You know, right <laughs> now. First you gotta shove that that money in a magazine and and ship it out. All right, we're in Mexico, but we're on the eastern side, so we're still in Imperator. We haven't gotten to Sigma, so Cancun. Ooh. Mexico. That's a little dis disappointing for Cancun. I was uh, no, it's it awesome. Cancun. It's like super high connectivity, super yeah. dots, super CBLT. Yeah. Really and, they're, and they're little shits. I had a Cancun <laughs> a long time ago. All right, switching over the mountains, the, other, the western side of Mexico. Or no, this is the eastern side still. Uh, the cloud forest bow is so like up the mountain range, but not on the other side. Those are cool. Yes. Yeah. Well, and they're like cool. cold tolerant, pretty, but very rare. I think very only tolerant. Ven has them. I think very so. Very rare. Boo. Move on. But, but they're, hot. they're awesome. Okay. Yeah. Sonoran. So this is the boa species, boa sigma. Other side of the mountains. This is like the generic. Okay. So I've actually even heard this of this and I know nothing about boas. <laughs> right. Because leopard is from this species. Yep. Okay. So I love people... leopard. But this is kind of like, bleh. Well, this is just the wild type. Okay, Jana. Bleh. Okay. Yeah, I love leopard, though. They seem to leopard be like hop. the most hard to breed, except for maybe like Argentines, because they like want to be cold. Right. They are if you, they, I, mine does has ovulated, but like, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I should shove you outside in 50 degree weather overnight. Or at for least you to be, <laughs> yeah, for you to be like really into it. Yeah, my buddy's had a little, not issues, but he's had a harder time breeding his leopard crosses and stuff. Yeah, well, like mine is pure technically, but she didn't breed for the first time until she was nine. And she was plenty wow. big enough. She, I, I was just like taking her out, like doing stuff, like unplugging her heat mat. She's just like, I don't feel like ovulating. You're dumb. So like, I, I'm not triggering it because they're they live in the desert. It's really cold at night. Like regularly into the fifties. All right, yeah. Taramara, locality of Sonoran. Go, Chris. Go. Yeah, no, these guys. I think they're the best. The best locality overall. Uh, size is incredible with them, and I think I think a lot with these 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 real dwarf species. Like even going back with the Sonoran you just had up. I think the feeding response has a lot to do with it. Aside with the cooler temps, I think that was the key to getting these guys to breed for me, and the age too. I it's mean, the size or size of your adult female? Just uh, she's got to be three and a half foot. A burdensome three and a half foot, everybody. Oh, wow, <laughs> <laughs> gonna break the bank. Than a weaned rat uh, for real, right? So like, I think this is like S class, like all day, small, cute, like busy, flowery pattern. Mm -hmm. They do like look brown when they grow up, but who cares? Most bows look brown, but like Sometimes. the flowery complex pattern is is uh, yep. what I'm into. No, they're they're very hardy, but like I said, feeding feeding cycle. So like if you're cooling them down, and you bring them up out, and you're starting to pair and through that pairing, if you hammer them with food for just about a month to six weeks, I think that makes or breaks you, you, some of these yeah. species going. My problem is like they hold weight too well. Like if I accidentally lever them up, I'm just like I'm gonna starve you for like a, a year to get you to lose two grams. Like. They are like built to live forever on nothing but like dreams and like uh, agave nectar in the forest. <laughs> like I, I don't, I don't. It's it's wild. So like they're they're the most bulletproof of the boas to me because it looks like you can't hurt them because they come from somewhere that sucks. They're very hardy. Mm -hmm. yep, they just are a little harder to breed, maybe because you need to hit the cues. Yep, they're on the bottom. All right, we, we did it. Shanna, she's still awake. I don't know. Hey, probably not. I don't know. The eyes are getting slow. <laughs> oh, and then the the boa range goes almost all the way to the Texas border. So we were this close at stealing enough of Mexico to have native <sighs> USA boas. Dang it! So whenever I think about um, imperial ambitions, I'm going south. Okay, <laughs> like if we need to like annex the country, boas please. All right. That's it. Um, I think I'm going to skip news. I got a show to go to, Jana. What about you? Ooh. Oh, I got a show to go to as well that I haven't even started prepping for. <laughs> um, no, I really I quickly just, um, go ahead. just need to hit some points. Um, 
a couple weeks ago we had Shane on and I was running my mouth and um, was making fun of some business names grab my balls so i would just like to apologize to grab my balls that was not a personal attack on you or your business uh i was unfortunately putting my foot in my mouth and um it was nothing personal against you or your business and i i apologize for throwing you in there with the don't name your business this so i apologize mm -hmm. i think it, i think it's grab your balls i think i think it's carlos yeah his name here yeah. carlos hey I yeah, well, I don't think Jana was like trying to pick on you. She's just like, no, I didn't even has, know like the action who he was or his business. I was literally just name. pulling it out of a hat, yeah. and it just happened to be someone's business. And I was not trying to demerit his business or his breeding or anything. It was not a personal attack on him or his business. So I just wanted to take a minute to say that I was sorry for for that, and I will be more conscientious of what I say in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I also did not intend any slight i think we've said it before on a different yeah, pocket but, but it's a different have. set of verbs and right nouns in some kind of yes right in it wasn't fashion. like yours is bad or whatever it's just like lots of people copy you correct so now like it's overdone can't copy now. you anymore right right he's okay. already got that name you don't need to use it let him have it Right. Some people you have I wasn't trying to say that he, that, he was that bad. exact one like twice. Correct. Like, I, I was to trying to say him. like we don't need any more of those names. So when picking your name that exists already, Google it, guys. Okay. Before okay. you pick your name. That's that's what I was trying to say. And I, I said it very poorly. And it made it sound mm -hmm. like I thought that he was dumb or that his business was dumb or his name was dumb. I'm just saying, like, it's been done. Check the names before you do it. Like, there's lots of cutesy ones about grabbing your balls or <laughs> having balls or whatever. Like, they're just, just suck on my a different balls. line. I swear to God, they're my, my balls. Anyway, like that. That's what I was trying to say poorly. Yeah. All right. Do we want to go over any other news, or do we just want to give up and go to bed? Oh, well, I watched a three-hour fucking movie last night, so we better oh, yeah, talk I about forgot. it, bitch. <laughs> Okay, how you watched The Godfather, correct? I watched The Godfather. That was Movie Madness winner okay. for this week. And um, I realized yesterday at 9 p.m. that I had not watched it yet. And it's a three-hour movie. So, whoa. Um, it was really good. I actually plan to watch the other two when I find the time. Um, I really liked it. It was a very old movie, but it didn't wasn't like, oh, I hate this and it's ruined because it's old. It was still very very good i really enjoyed it okay the ending was like mm -hmm. badass yeah, oldie but a goodie a long time so oh i don't know I if it's like if it's 30 enough. years old is there such a thing as spoiler alerts no no, no. I, mean, I, know, like, I, I i watched it i just like i thought it was fine i i don't have any comment but i'm like i'm glad you liked it you found a movie you liked yeah, no, I really Ooh. liked it. He's like in the church, you know, being dedicated as his nephew's godfather, which in my mind, like, isn't Godfather supposed to be like somebody you're not related to? Anyway, that's yeah. neither here nor there. But he's there getting, you know, blessed as Godfather. And at the time, I'm like, oh, shit, he's about to, like, do something huge because obviously it's called the Godfather and his dad was dead. And, and, and so I was just like, <gasps> and then he did it. And then it was just like, <laughs> fuck, yeah, it was cool. I liked it. Do you want to ask Chris what he will? Chris, do you do you like movies? Oh, occasionally. I haven't watched. I uh, I don't have that much time to sit down and watch a lot, but we do watch it. What's your favorite movie ever? Uh, man, I was really into the uh, casino movies or anything that had to do with like the Goodfellas realm. I really enjoyed those. It's kind of on the lines of the Godfather, the mafia type movies, but I also mm -hmm. played a lot of cards, so like rounders and the actual casino, you know. With, uh, what's his name in it? I'm not sure. Uh, Jan, do you want to do like a, a casino? Uh, casino? No, I said Chris like, had to pick two. Did you pick two? I know. That's what I'm telling him. I put a few together on a list here, and I didn't know like what what way you were going with it because I do believe Casino is a '90s movie. I, I, I'm, it doesn't matter. It's the two you like. Right. You you're in say, charge I don't get to say. Like you're, I am not in charge. The boat. <laughs> I have you failed old. everyone in my movie experiences, and you get to tell me uh, more this comedic, more yes. comedic, or more like gangster, or like 
whatever you thought was better or give me one of each and we'll we'll put them against each other you could do top three like this is all you being like this right. is bad a and you right. are an idiot because you missed it well i mean a, there's a there's a classics too that you've probably heard of do you look for stuff that you've already seen or stuff that you haven't stuff that i haven't seen haven't seen all right well i mean the, which is mostly classic. everything a classic from the 90s would be Miss Doubtfire, but everybody's seen that, I believe. Yeah, I've seen that. That's a classic. Um, more on the the, the 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 gangster side that you might not have seen. That was a classic, I think, back in the day in my younger years. Uh, Juice. I've never heard of that. Go go take a look at that. It's got Tupac okay. in it. It's an old movie with Tupac. Oh, in. okay. Juice, it's called. And, okay, and I need at least one more or two more. more. Um, mm -mm, Kingpin. You ever seen Kingpin? Mm -mm. There you go. Put that one up there. That's a comedy. And then uh, one more serious one. Fatal Instinct. Did you ever see that one from back in the day? Mm -mm. No? All right. It's a little more serious. There you go. That's right. It. Like, Jana's a baby, and she needs, like, sensory input. So... It's just, it's not, it's just like, it could be anything. Because at this point, we don't know what her tastes are. She hasn't experienced any of it. So we see that. Wow. Like, show her books. Wow. Harsh take. Thanks. Well, those, those three are all different ends of the spectrum. So okay. one might mm -hmm. hit her. Uh, uh, lost we'll have to see. Yes, I, I do remember the casino deck of DS9. I did mm -hmm. watch a lot of Star Trek. That makes me sound like an uber nerd, which may be true. All right, Jamie. <laughs> I'm assuming you're asking all of us. Chris is going to be at Oaks tomorrow. Jana's going to be at the Northwest. What is it called? Northwest Reptile Expo. Expo. Yep. In, in Portland. And I will be at Shawnee uh, Herp Show. Not in Portland. What state is the Shawnee one in? Where are you? What, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Where the wind blows. Oklahoma. <laughs> I'm in PA, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Yeah. It's, so it's, if you're in any of those areas, come say hi to us. Stop by our table. If you feel like it, buy a snake, please. Yeah. Available today. Costa Ricans. Longicana. Yes. Are you bringing any Knicks that weren't on your morph market? No, those are all gone. No Knicks this year. We'll have the, the Tarahumars, the Costa Ricans, the, Lon the Longicatas, and then hopefully in the spring, we'll have some Doomerals. Nice. Oh, Doomerals. I like those. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't cover them because they're not uh, boa genus. They're yeah, they're weird. <laughs> they're a different animal. That's like a whole different uh, thing. Uh, Ohana, go ahead. I was just gonna say they're odd. They don't. They haven't been laying until October. That's when I've been getting my litters of doomerals. As crazy as that is. Yeah, and if you want like a boa-ish thing that is a blood, a doomerol is as close as you can get i've never picked up a snake and felt like i was holding a tuna fish until <laughs> i picked up a tumor they're like i'm in the air i i swear i'm in the air <laughs> like, so help me and you're like i swear i'm holding you they're like no you're not they don't like hold on to you correctly like, a bow is like okay i'll hold on to you you're a tree and he's like Please. they're a load yeah they're, it, it's just different like they're a nice color and mine was like too much of an ambush predator like i thought he was like a safety risk to human beings like you really had to tap train the shit out of him because they would slap oh, yeah. anything in there because they would be under the stuff waiting for a little mouse to rustle by like worse than a boa is even at the same problem which they also have the same problem but i, I was just like this shit is not safe uh ohana said so many locality bows are truly a must see in person to appreciate to me some of my favorites are the most blah in photos and a lot of those photos were his so he would know about like the rarer stuff. Yes. I, I think like I, I try to convince people like all boas are cool and they're cool in ways that you don't expect because they change colors. They have ontogenetic color change. You can expect like a different adult from your baby. They can fire up and down. Like the reds and oranges will come in and the yellows will come in. Some of them will get really dark. So it's exciting to have like a this ever changing snake that largely just improves with time. I agree. Mm -hmm. It's like the opposite of a ball python. <laughs> but we're engineering. I so didn't say it. <laughs> we're engineering them differently now. Oh, yeah, ball pythons are getting better. I just, 
like a lot of the appeal of a bow is like the locality and the phenotype and the cage and the aesthetics of the individual animal and your experience and where you got them from and your friend. I don't know. Like there's a, there's a lot into it, just like it is with like, I guess other like ball pythons. It's, they're more fungible. Like, Oh, I bought a clown combo. You got a clown combo. They're the same thing. <laughs> like it's like a, a unit of animal, not like an experience a relationship not that it doesn't have to be that way forever but you know what i'm saying all right i think we did it any other news uh, we Kayla did go good over... good last night i don't know if we have to go over it she did a great job no it was an good incredible job. nido episode one of my favorites so far ever in the industry um so if you are into biosecurity into um, nido testing that is a great episode to check out with kayla um we do we need to go over the yucca yucca? Oh uh, yeah, it's pronounced uh, yucca. Yucca is a cassava plant. It's cassava root from Africa. So we had like a, a yucca yucca debate last week. Um, there were so many DMs. <laughs> Omg, who <laughs> effing cares? Right there, there's I'm a botanical botanical difference between the two things, and I we we did double check. Yucca is the correct pronunciation for the stuff that is in road food. Yucca is a different item that you could also feed to rats, uh, uh, ironically. But one last question from Lisa: What makes a bow a fire? Hmm. Do you want to answer that? No, I, I don't. I don't know what it what it could be. I would just uh, suspect different moods, and I'm sure temperature. Uh, I mean, yeah, they actually have like like a little. I'll have to do a, a video about this one day, but they have like a little squeezy thing where they can squeeze up pigment higher in their skin cells and then squeeze it down. So it, based on like how much it's usually like a blood flow thing, but obviously blood flow is like, you know, hunger, mood, temperature, Whatever time of day, cycle, uh, hormonal. Like there's all kinds of reasons why they would want to do that, but it's mostly them firing up and down a certain amount of like, darkness so when you like pull it away you reveal weird extra colors and it's usually at night not all the time but usually so like if a snake is in their light mode during the day you're like yes yeah, sweet let's take 10 pictures because it doesn't always line up that way um but there's actually like a, a mechanical way that that happens it's probably very similar to how it happens in other reptiles too hmm. that's fun mm-hmm it's like All a right. it's like a little squeezy. It like physically like oh. contorts it and forces the the pigments to go up in the cell so they're closer to the yeah. surface. All yeah. Right. Then like go like this. <laughs> All right, fuck it. We did it. Thank you everybody for coming. We love you. Thank you for Chris for tolerating whatever just you, happened. My whatever God. just happened. Thank you for sponsoring it. the podcast. Thank you for showing up, even though you're Mr. Momming it. We really appreciate your time. <laughs> I know you did a great job. I was just waking up, so it's perfect. Oh, yay, we did it. Yay. All right. Goodbye, All right. everyone. All right. Thank Bye. you. Bye.